The following is a production of CUTV Sports. This season has been an uphill climb to the top of the PSAC West for both the Vulcans and the Rock. Led by quarterback Nigel Barksdale in an explosive offense, the Rock find themselves in a battle for the West Championship. The Vulcan defense is looking to stop Slippery Rock in their tracks. Who will reach the top of the mountain and capture the top spot in the PSAC West? Find out next. Throughout the 2013 season, the PSAC West has been a puzzle waiting to be solved. Now here today at Mahalik Thompson Stadium, both California University of Pennsylvania and the Slippery Rock University Rock look to put in the final piece for their playoff aspirations. I'm Zach Lamar and joining me is Cody Jeanette here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium, like I said, where the Vulcans will take on the Rock of Slippery Rock University. Now Cody, these two teams today, this is basically who decides who might represent the West in the state game, barring results for next week. Nonetheless, both these teams are coming in with a couple long winning streaks throughout the season. Yeah, they have. California last week at home against Gannon, really uh, offensive powerhouse there in that game, coming away with a 35-7 to victory. Um, and then Slippery Rock, on the other hand, also had a big win of their own over Edinburgh by a final score of 44-20. to But the difference in that, Zach, was that Slippery Rock was on the road, and now they're coming home, and they have that 4-0 uh, home win streak, so that's going to be tough for Cal to overcome. Yeah, California, a 2-2 two and two team on the road. Losses to both Westchester and IUP in PSAC play. Nonetheless, we're going to look at the series history. This is the 75th all-time meeting between these storied programs and Cody. It leans one way in all the results, but uh, both teams have had success in the past decade in this matchup. Yeah, they really have. Slippery Rock does have the edge in this series with a 44-28-3 and 28 and 3 record in their favor. And last time these two teams played each other, it was at Cal, and Slippery Rock just barely edged out a 28-26 to victory over uh, the Vulcans. And that was a uh, nail-biting game. It came down to the final seconds. I remember that game from last year. It was quite, quite, quite a thrilling game, but California, unfortunately, uh, fell short. Yeah, and that game, conditions similar much to this uh, dark, rainy day. We'll have to see how the weather plays into this one. We're going to go into our players to watch now. And for California, we're going to go with a running back who a lot of people think might should be starting. He's done so well, but he's been behind the starter for all the season. He's still doing well, though. Yeah, he's taking the back seat to Jeffrey Knox Jr., but the guy that we're talking about is Nick Grissom. Nick Grissom last week uh, against Gannon had 81 rushing yards and ran for a touchdown, so he contributed to those 35 offensive points. And then on the defensive side, you got to look at Aaron Terry. Aaron Terry is leading the way with four interceptions, but he's the kind of guy that you really don't hear his name all that often. Um, he's a freshman who is leading the way in interceptions on this whole entire team. He's contributing defensively very well. Yeah, Terry time is becoming a very popular site here in the last few weeks for the Vulcans. Now looking at the Slippery Rock uh, roster, we're going to go on offense and defense. There's a lot of names you can pick to who can influence this game and be an X Factor. We're going to go two names that might not stand out to a lot of fans. And Cody, you have both of those for us. Yeah, John Shademan is the one guy that we're looking at for the offensive side of the ball. He's a wide receiver who has had over 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns on the year, Zach. Big offensive contributor. And so it should be ultra interesting to note that he leads the way in the entire nation, averaging 22 yards per catch. So Slippery Rock has a lot of offensive weapons, including Shademan. But then on the defensive side, they, um, the guy that we're going to be looking at is Matt Peacock, who has four and a half sacks on the season. So James Harris is, is going to be on his toes whenever he sees Matt Peacock coming in to sack him. Yeah, Harris sometimes struggles when he's being rushed. The offensive line really needs to produce today. When we come back, we will have kickoff here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium on CU TV. Do you want to 
want the latest scoop on California Vulcans football? Watch each week for highlights and analysis of last week's game, a preview of next week's game, and a look around the PSAC. Get pumped. Vulcan Football 2013, Tuesday through Friday, it's on CUTV. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports team. CUTV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. CUTV is your home for local high school football action. Sundays at 8.30, Thursdays at 5.30, only on CUTV. There is a university built on an uncommon dedication to the whole student, where core values of integrity, civility, and responsibility are not just taught, but integrated into academic experience. Creating a learning environment for personal life as well as professional life. California University of Pennsylvania. Vulcan Football 2013 is brought to you by First Niagara Bank, JD Waterproofing, UPMC Health Plan. Lee Supply Company, the Physical Therapy Institute, and Trip Total Media. And now, Cody, we're going to look at our tail of the tape, brought to you by JD Waterproofing, both these teams. It looks one-sided towards Slippery Rock, but California can still put up the points and the offense as well. Yeah, time of possession looks really even, Zach, but if you take a look at the turnover margin, California even though they're both in the negatives, they have the upper hand there with a minus five to minus 10 differential. That's, it, the thing is, offensive numbers necessarily may not matter as much as turnovers because the more times you get the ball, the more points you'll have to score. So that's where California may have the upper hand here, even though the offensive yards are one-sided. Absolutely, I know the quarterback for Slippery Rock, Nigel Barksdale, he has 10 interceptions on the year, I believe. The leading quarterback for California, Cody Schroeder, I believe he only had six or seven. So we'll have a slight edge in that um, competition right there, Will California. Now, I think we're going to look at our weather forecast now, Cody. And this is much like last year's game, where it was a very dark and gloomy day. Included a little bit of precipitation. I've been called out saying it's perspiration from the sky. It's precipitation. It's about maybe 50 degrees, about a 15% chance of rain, and it has started to drizzle already in 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, which will affect the game a little bit as well. Yeah, I know when we got here earlier this morning to set up, there was some off and on rain showers coming down, but for now the rain has slowed down. And, um, but still, as you said in our opens, Zach, the uh, weather may become a factor, so we'll have to see how the story unfolds in that aspect. Absolutely, Cody, and we have 15 minutes on the clock. Looks like the teams are about to come out there. The team representatives. Although I think they've actually done that, Cody. So we'll have to see who will receive and who will kick first. Slippery Rock will receive the ball first. Their return men are number 25 and number 26. Number 26, Jimmy Zubik. Number 25, Drew Scales. And Cody, uh, we love being near the action today. We're not so fortunate. We're close to the 
field, but not as close as we usually are in a press box in a warm, confined area. But nonetheless, we're still going to bring you the action as best we can here on CETV. Yeah, we're located on the left end zone in the back corner. Like, if you go straight from the back corner, that's where we're at. So we'll be bringing that from all angles possible that we can here today. Balkans versus The Rock of Slippery Rock. And as the sun starts to peek out from the clouds, kickoff is moments away. Cody Nuzo teeing up the ball, running up to it. And we are underway here at Mahalik Tonson Stadium. Kick will be fielded in the end zone and be run out. Finds running room and he is taken down. Looks like number 85 on the tackle. Looks like that was CJ Goodwin. We're gonna look at the starting defense for California. Noah Taylor's our highlighted player. Led the team with nine tackles last week. Yeah, highlighted is Noah Taylor, as you said, but then there's also other players like Dewey McDonald, CJ Towns, who are really good in the secondary, and then our player to watch, Aaron Terry, the cornerback, who leads the way in, with four interceptions this season for the Vulcans. And now the Rock will be setting up to their first offensive drive. Nigel Barksdale is in the shotgun formation, number 23, that is Shamar Green, flanked out to the right. Five receivers in this play. Barksdale takes it right up the middle himself. Breaks the defender. Shakes off another one. He is finally taken down. Tackle made by number 99, Anthony McPoyle. And we have our offensive starters now. For Slippery Rock, Nigel Barksdale, Barksdale excuse me, highlighted there. And Slippery Rock about to go to a no-huddle offense. Yeah, Nigel Barksdale highlighted, as you said, Zach. And we have an incomplete pass as Cody. This is one of the fastest offenses in all of Division II, much like Oregon in the FBS. That pass incomplete, it was a screen attempt. So that pass is intended for number 17, Jemire Dutriel. I um, apologize if I butchered that name at all. I'm sure I did. We have a handoff. No, Barksdale keeps it himself, breaks up the middle, met by a swarm of California defenders. Looks like it might be a gain of two or three yards, so it looks like it's gonna be a third and medium for the Rock. And the defensive line did a really good job at collapsing the pocket. The runner tried going up the middle, but there was absolutely nothing there except a brick wall, hypothetically, to stop him there. It's actually third and four, Cody. So, again, it's six right there. Like we said, it's hard to tell from this vantage point just exactly how many yards are gained or lost. Third and four from the 42-yard line just underway here. Barksdale, back to pass, under a little bit of pressure, has his receiver, and has complete to number 30 for the Rock. That is Teddy Blakeman. And that will be enough for a first down. Teddy Blakeman doing a great job navigating up the near sideline to get a, a bunch of yards after completion and hurtling over a California defender that tried diving to push him out of bounds. You'll see right here on the replay, right there, just that extra effort to get a few yards can make a big difference. Yeah, it could be the big difference here in today's game as Bruxelles throws the screen pass. It is incomplete again, number 17. Dutriel did not hang on to that one as well. Bobbles that one, so had one go through his hands. Now can't hold, hang on to it. Brings up a second and ten. Yeah, and you can see how frustrated he was after the pass goes right to him. He had it in his hands just as he turns around. It bobbles out, and that's you see his frustration in his face and everything. It can frustrate a receiver. Now Barksdale back to pass. Tries to break out. He gets to the outside. Tries running it himself. Breaks a couple defenders and is finally met by the Cal defense. Great penetration there by the defensive line. I believe on the pressure there for the Vulcans was number 92 on the defensive line. That's Blake Bell um, creating the initial pressure along with a few other guys. So great defensive stand there by the Vulcans. Yeah, Jeff Parrish was part of that tackling group as well. So we're gonna have a third and 10 from the 45 yard line now. Barksdale in a little bit of a pistol formation is what we can tell. He is back to pass. He'll go down the field, and that one is well short of his intended receiver. Look like number 32 for California. I believe that is Tyrone Taylor. Almost could have come up with an interception there. Yeah, Tyrone Taylor, great coverage by him and the rest of the secondary to eliminate uh, to eliminate Barksdale's options. And yeah, just barely fell at his shoe at his shoelaces, really close to an interception there. And you'll have to wonder if the wind affected that pass at all. The wind is blowing right at us, Cody, so it might have. Swayed the ball one way or another. The punter for Slippery Rock is James McCombie. His punt almost blocked. The Cal defender almost had it. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. And Cody, 
that one would have been a big break for the Vulcan special teams. Yeah, that would have been a big break as we take a look at the California offense. Speaking of offense, highlighted in there is our tailback, Jeffrey Knox, who is uh, the lead guy in California's running game, but we've highlighted Nick Grissom, who last year, or excuse me, last week, I beg your pardon, had a big game, 81 yards and a touchdown, but Jeffrey Knox really leading the way, and you gotta wonder if he's serving serving as a more of a mentor for the other running backs like Fiore and Grissom. It is his first 100 yard game that he has ever had last week. And now Harris under center, two receivers, one on each side, handoff to Knox, tries to get outside, breaks it back up the middle and taken down around the 22 yard line. So a gain of two yards on the play. And uh, looking at the Slippery Rocks defense, highlighted there is number two, Quindell Dean out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, which is uh, close to the California area. Um, him and the rest of the Slippery Rock defense stopping the Vulcans here early on. Second and eight from the 22 yard line, 12-25 left in the first quarter. A fake handoff and it is an in round. Looks like it'll be a fake play. Nadir Brown goes down the field and he has the catch. That is Mike Williams, he has it. There is a penalty flag on the play though, Cody, from what I can see, so we'll have to see if this play stands. The referee running to the field to try and huddle with the other officials. Regardless if this play stands or not, that was a phenomenal play. It had me fooled, but our very skilled camera guys were able to maintain uh, maintain a good uh, standpoint on where the ball was and everything. So, Zach, we're waiting on the call and is going to be holding against Slippery Rock, so the play will stand. And that was a tremendous play. Well, look here, we have to give credit to our camera people. Staying with that play, Nadir Brown looked like he could have run it. Throws it down the field. And then and Mike then. Williams has a phenomenal catch over the shoulder right at about, it looked like the 38 yard line. And California busting into Slippery Rock territory. All of a sudden they're threatening to score. And it's first and 10 from the 26 yard line. 12.08 left in the first quarter. Harris under center. Has a receiver on each side. It is a handoff to Knox. And there's a fumble on the play. We'll have to see who recovers the ball. Looks like Knox got the ball back himself, so. Or excuse me, that's not Knox. That was Desmond Green, number seven for the Vulcans. Yeah, and it was very fortunate that that play didn't turn out uh, worse for the Vulcans. Jeffrey Knox just, the ball just, he didn't even have it stripped or anything. It just slipped right out of his grasp. I uh, wonder if it was loose while he had it tucked away in his arm or anything, but um, very fortunate that Slippery Rock didn't capitalize on that. It is second and 15 from the 31 yard line now. There are three receivers on this play. Twins to the left, solo receiver to the right. I believe that is Mike Williams. Harris with the pass. There's a short pass and it's incomplete, deflected off a Slippery Rock defender. That was number two, Quindell Dean, who you highlighted. Yeah, Quindell Dean is the one guy out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania on this Slippery Rock defense. And this pass by Harris was right on the mark, but Dean just snuck right in front of Williams and was able to bat it down. So Slippery Rock's cornerback's doing a great job there. It looks like the pass is a little bit behind the intended receiver, Mike Williams, and that's what caused it to hit off Dean. Nonetheless, we're gonna have a third and 15 now, 11 and a half left in the first quarter. We see three receivers still, four receivers actually, excuse me. And Harris will break it out the middle himself and be taken down around the 26 yard line. So a gain of about four or five on that play, it's gonna bring up fourth down. This play is a great example of turning nothing into something by Harris, great awareness in the pocket for James Harris to be able to see, you know, doesn't have very many options downfield and he sees the hole open up, so he takes it himself and goes to the, uh, goes up forward. And now we're gonna have a field goal attempt here from Cody Nuzo. It will be a 44 yard attempt. Wind blowing in our direction, Cody, see if he can hit it. Kick is up, it is good. So the Vulcans will strike first. Their first possession get three points on the board. And when we come back, we'll have more first quarter action here at Mahalik. Thompson Stadium where the Vulcans lead three to nothing. Need to know what's happening in your area? CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. 
It, it was the wind. Local weather. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. The Vulcans lead three to nothing off a 44 yard field goal from Cody Nuzo. And Cody, Jeanette, not Cody Nuzo, that one curved with the wind and went straight through the uprights. It did, and that was one of the longest field goals we've ever seen Cody Nuzo get. It's not his longest, though, his longest being 46. And now this kick fielded right at the one yard line and taken back by number 26, Jimmy Zubik. Tries to break it to the outside and he is met by some California defenders around the 27 yard line. So that is where Slippery Rock will start their second drive looking to maybe tie this one up or take the lead. Yeah, and California's defense is going to look to continue to stand strong, led the way by Aaron Terry and Dewey McDonald. But Zach, it's whenever Slippery Rock has the ball, this is what California's defense has to look at. Uh, the points are heavily in Slippery Rock's favor, 46 and a half to California's. Uh, points, which is just 30 points less. So big differential there, but the yards also, as we saw in our tail of the tape, are big difference. Yeah, the coach for Slippery Rock, Coach Mahalik, uh, we had an interview earlier this week by one of our own Creighton Ravs said that this might be the most athletic team they've played all year. As we have a pitch play, number 23, Shamar Green has it. He is taken down maybe a gain of about one or two yards, so bring up second and about eight. Shamar Green trying to sneak out to the outside over there on the far side of the field, but California's defense, again, doing a great job, that, uh, really collapsing around them and taking them down. G big defensive stand here early on. Barksdale, back to pass. He looks to go way downfield, and he finally does. That one almost intercepted by Dewey McDonald. Teams have been throwing away from him lately, Cody, and that one he had an opportunity to get a big INT for the Vulcans. Yeah, in and out of the tips of the fingers of Dewey McDonald, who's also one of the guys that we've been following all year. But Barksdale doing a good job looking at his receivers. He looked to his right, then looked to his left, then back to his right again, and saw his intended target open, but Dewey McDonald there instead. And fortunately for uh, Slippery Rock, there was no interception. Now Barksdale going back down the field, under a little bit of pressure, gets the pass away. Incomplete and intercepted by California. So they will run it back. Taken out about the 35 yard line. Have to see who that was. That was, we can't actually tell he's being scored. That was number 10 for the Vulcans. Number 10 is Jordan Bowman. I believe that's his first on the year. And boy, California's defense again, all coming through. They're on running on all cylinders here this afternoon against the Rock. They're probably well aware in that locker room that they're gonna face one of the most athletic teams in the PSAC. And here they are with forcing a uh, fourth down or in, on Slippery Rock's first drive and now a turnover on the second drive. Really great stellar performance by the defense. And now Cal, uh, Cody, when California has the ball, they're averaging about 29 points. Slippery Rock letting about 25. So California, if they can take an opportunity here and get some points on the board off a turnover, it'd be great for them. That's, that's a handoff to Nick Grissom and he breaks it. And he will get up the middle. It's actually, that's Trey Johnson. So we've seen him in the last couple of weeks doing a lot of running plays, coming out of the slot option. Yeah, Trey Johnson doing good, catching the defense by surprise and catching me by surprise as well. And he's still in the backfield, so we'll hand it off to him again, and he will get to the 24-yard line. So the board has not been updated, so we'll have to see. I can't tell if that's exactly enough for a new set of downs. I believe it probably will be, Cody. Uh, it's actually first and 10 from the 23 yard line, nine and a half left in the first quarter. So Harris getting the play from the sideline. Coach Keller, I'm sure, is shouting out what the play is going to be. Two receivers. Looks like there's a tight end on the play as well. Harris under center. Fakes the handoff. Rolls to his right. He keeps it himself and slides down to about 
the 21 and a half yard line, so a gain of about one on the play. And James Harris had a lot of real estate open for him. Um, right there, look, there's no one there on the screen. Look, I don't see anybody there. So he did a great job making a wise decision, get, gaining all of the yards that he can uh, on that run and sliding wisely as to prevent injuries. Absolutely, Cody, and you see that sometimes in the NFL. Quarterbacks, they have a wide open field in front of them, they'll take it off. Harris doing the same right there, and as a sophomore, uh, you like to see that development and know, and the know-it-all to do that instead of just throw it down the field and maybe cause an interception. It'll be second and nine from the 22 now, eight and a half left. Fake the handoff, and no, it is, it is a handoff. That is the Jeff Knox. He will gain about five yards on the play. He'll bring up a third and medium for the Vulcans. Jeffrey Knox once again pushing the California offense straight through. Um, not letting that defensive line intimidate them at all. There's some pretty big guys there on that defensive line. But uh, Jeffrey Knox leading the way, busting into the red zone, threatening to score. It's actually third and one, Cody, so we might see another run play to Jeff Knox here. Silver Rock's defense might be ready for that, though. Let's see Harris under center. It is a run play, and he will be stuffed immediately behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two on the play. So we might see Cody Nuso come back out for another field goal opportunity, or they might go for it, Cody. They're so close, they've stopped Silver Rock so far, but knowing how athletic Silver Rock is, I would go for the points here. Yeah, it is fourth down and two with seven minutes and 33 seconds left to go, and Harris stays in there. They're going for it, Zach. We see Ryan McCauley in there as well. Desmond Green, Jeff Knox in the backfield as the rain is starting to really fall here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. Fourth and two from the 16-yard line. Mike Williams in motion. Harris with the snap. Fakes the handoff to McCauley, and that pass is batted down. So Slippery Rock takes over on downs. Had the play there, Cody. Just the pass deflected immediately. I believe that's number 22, Admire Carter. Yeah, Admire Carter doing a uh, jumping into the uh, into the passing lane. You know, the pass looked like it was intended for Desmond Green, but it fell into the fingertips of, of Admire Carter instead. And now. Uh, Cody, we have some game notes there. Top five in the country with 376.3 passing yards a game is Slippery Rock. Our third in the PSCC with rushing and total defense. And Mahalik is the fourth winningest active coach in Division II. So a lot of experience on the sidelines for the Rock as we are getting pelted with raindrops now, Cody. It's very hard to see the field, but Barksdale, another screen pass. This one complete to number 23 for the Rock. That is Shamar Green. Jamar Green being one of the guys that we talked about here during this game, and um, the pass being complete, it's a uh, the, 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 the weather's certainly not intimidating them, Zach, and it's uh, gonna be a big test for this offense, keeping the ball in their fingertips. That's an issue we've seen all year long. That was a loss of one on the play, so second and 11. Is a handoff to Shamar Green up the middle to about the 20 yard line, so a gain of five on the play. will bring up third and six, I believe for the Rock, we'll have to see here what they do on third down. They've had two unsuccessful third downs in the game so far, as uh, they're about to go to the no huddle as well. Barksdale will hand it up to Shamar Green. He is met immediately right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one, bring up fourth and five. The Slippery Rock, they are going to punt again, so their offense is being stalled here so far by the Vulcans defense doing a good job of penetrating the run game and keeping the receivers in front of them. Yeah, the, the defense is doing a really good job and I'm sure Slippery Rock is disappointed in this drive, you know, getting the turn, uh, getting the turnover on downs and not being able to capitalize on it. Yeah, and if you're California, you need the score here as well because a field goal, um, everyone knows you're not gonna just win three nothing against a team like Slippery Rock. It's the punt is away, it's a short punt. Takes a bounce, Trey Tasha will field it and he is taken down immediately, so right about the 41 yard line in Cal territory. Maybe not a smart decision for Johnson to field that one there, might have caused a fumble for the Vulcans. Yeah, a fair catch would have been a good option there, but he did a great job holding onto the ball. It looked like it was about to slip out, but um, he saw it just barely peek out of his elbow. But Zach, whenever you take a look at California's game notes, um, Jeffrey Knox Jr., first 100 uh, yard rushing game in his last 12 games, as I said uh, earlier on in this game. And 21 points have been allowed in all, in all of last three games. This defense has been stellar here in this late part of the season. Yeah, seven points each to Seton Hill, Clarion, and Gannon. So this is a much different team though, Cody. Got to see if that continues. Harris back to pass. Has a receiver, and it is Mike Williams, but that one is incomplete. Overthrows his intended receiver. 
If Mike Williams caught that one, Cody, I think we might be talking about a Vulcan touchdown right there. Yeah, and it looked like the wind might have gotten a hold of that pass. It was, um, the wind was blowing right in our direction, and that is exactly where Harris threw it. If Harris would have thrown it about maybe 30 more yards, it would have landed right on top of my head. So <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the direction it, it was coming in, and, um, and the wind is blowing right in our faces right now. Yeah, we have 5.36 left in the second, or the first quarter, excuse me, it is second and 10 for the Vulcans. The 43-yard line is where they stand. Harris in the shotgun formation. He is back to pass again. Rolls out to his right under a little bit of pressure. Throws it away. And it is complete to Des Green. So I was not expecting Des Green to actually catch that one, Cody. He came out of nowhere to get the completion. I wasn't expecting Harris to get a pass off. Man, that was a uh, very impressive stand there. By the, uh, by the quarterback and his receiver both. I thought Harris was gonna be pushed out of bounds there, but just barely sneaking away with it. And it looked like the pass got tipped by one of the uh, Slippery Rock cornerbacks. So good catch there off of the tip. Yeah, good job for Des Green to keep control and focus on the ball. First and 10 at the 46. We have a handoff. I believe that's Derek Fiore on the handoff. Goes to about the 41 yard line, a gain of five on the play. Bring up second and five with just over five minutes left. That's a lot of fives, Cody. Yeah, and <laughs> after the uh, big first down conversion there, they're uh, crossing midfield now, uh, led the way by Fiore and the offensive line, which did a great job creating the hole for him and making him go off the middle. Second and five from the 41 yard line. Harris under center, one receiver. Fullback, I believe that's Ryan McCauley is in as well. So you have another handoff. That is Nick Grissom as he breaks it open and is taken down about the 28 yard line. So Nick Grissom, we highlighted him doing a good job. That's what he does best, finding the out outside holes and finding a running lane. Yeah, exactly. And you got to give credit to the line too, who, because without them, none of Grissom runs would have been possible. There's a couple great blocks there as you saw on your screen. Uh, couldn't really make out any numbers, but still. This offensive line's been doing pretty, very well for the run game. First and 10 from the 33 yard line now. That was a eight yard run by Grissom. Harris is under center again. Two receivers on the right side. We have another handoff up the middle. Runner is met immediately, that is Nick Grissom. Taken down about the 30 yard line, so maybe a gain of three on the play. In minimal gain if anything, but still it's a positive gain. It's a, it's a um, you know, Grissom doing a good job sneaking through to trying to get any uh, positive yardage that he can, you know, not being met in the backfield by the uh, defensive line. So good run there by Grissom. And he has one run all season where he's lost yardage, Cody. So that's really what makes him valuable to the California offense is that he, you know he will get some yards for you most of the time, if not all the time. Now we have second and seven from the 30 yard line, three and a half minutes left. Harris is gonna keep it himself and he will go up the middle. Get himself to about the 25, 24 yard line. So a gain of five or six on the play. It'll bring up a very third, a very short third and one. Yeah, it'll be third and two according to the scoreboard here at uh, the stadium. And there's about three minutes left on the clock. 310, I beg your pardon. But Harris doing a good job again, making a wise decision. Now there's a handoff to Jeff Knox. And I don't know if he got anywhere on that play, Cody. Looks like he was met right at the line of scrimmage again. It'll bring fourth and two for the Vulcans. We'll have to see if they go for it here, if they get the points. It'll be a 42-yard field goal attempt. News already hit one from 44, but it looks like they're going to go for it again. Yeah, I don't see the special team squad coming out onto the field. Harris and company are still staying out there. They're going for it, Zach. I believe because of the, the rain and the wind, that might affect how well Cody Nuzo could kick the field goal. They don't want to take any chances here, leave some points on the board. So now fourth and two from the 25, two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Harris with the ball, gets the pass, and that one is batted. So Slippery Rock doing a great job on fourth down opportunities of batting passes down the offensive line, not protecting very well against the Rock, and we'll look at the replay here. Yeah, and this is the second straight fourth down conversion where we saw uh, number two, Quint Quind Quindell Dean, again out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, who uh, second time we've seen the pass batted down on a fourth down conversion. So Slippery Rock gets the turnover on downs and they're looking to make their drive more productive than the last time that happened for them. Absolutely, Cody. They've had three drives all stall, really getting nowhere. But with 2.27 left in the first, they might get something started here. As Barksdale fakes the handoff. It is a screen pass met immediately by the Cal defender though. That is number five, Dewey McDonald. 
Dewey McDonald coming up there, being very good with his self-awareness of where the ball was, uh, as a lot of people in the secondary should be. And there's great tackle there, you know, to bring him down to prevent any yards. Actually, it wasn't a tackle, more of like a wrap-up, but still it worked. Now Barksdale with a pass. Receiver, I believe he completes it. I'm not sure what they're going to give the signal as. They are going to say it's a completed catch. Looks like he caught that one between his legs, Cody. So phenomenal athleticism for the rock. He has a good, 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 very close catch, Zach. Very close catch. It's first and 10 from the 38-yard line now. Barksdale hands it up off the middle. Shamar Green gets to about the 43-yard line. So a gain of five on the play. Just over a minute and a half left in the first quarter. Yeah, and Slippery Rock, once again, trying to make this drive a little more productive than their last one when they got the turnover on downs. Barksdale's going to keep it himself. Might see the option play here. No, he will run up the field, evades the defenders, and be taken down at the 45-yard line in California territory. That was a 13-yard run for Barksdale. It'll be first down and 10 now. There's 80 seconds left on the clock as they stop it to move the chains. First and 10 now for the Rock, like you said. 3-0 California, just over a minute left. Handoff to Green up the middle, and he is taken down. A minimal gain, maybe a couple yards, as we are about to approach the final minute here in the first quarter. Yeah, and California taking the 3-0 lead, even though it's a small lead, it's still a lead. And that's a big testament against uh, holding Slippery Rock to zero points in one quarter. And the rain has stopped, so Barksdale back to pass. Under some pressure, almost sacked, still almost sacked. There is a flag on the play we might see a holding call here against the Rock as Barksdale was under so much pressure the pass is incomplete so we'll have to see what the officials rule here on the play yeah he saw the pocket quickly collapse around him and it is going to be holding against Slippery Rock as you said Zach so it'll back them up 10 yards now we'll have to see here if California accepts the penalty or if they decline it and make a third down it looks like they're going to accept it And it is going to be a repeat of second down, Cody, as we could hear the referee announcing the call. So, California, it might work out for uh, Slippery Rock. They get more opportunities to get 19 yards. It's second and 19 now. And, Cody, like we said, the water has stopped, so we can actually see what's going on on the field now. Not a lot of wind and precipitation in our faces. Barksdale's going to keep it himself. Gets to the outside. B.J. Stevens pushes him out about the 42 yard line so that's a gain of about 12 yards brings up third and seven I believe yeah it's a big gain there after the penalty they got those yards back and much more I mean it's a great run there by Barksdale keeping it for himself you know making the wise decisions both of these quarterbacks Harris and Barksdale have been making wise decisions here in this game and proving to be effective high snap a little bit for Barksdale hands it down the field and it is incomplete Looks like the receiver might have had it, but it bounces on the turf, and it is fourth down, and the Slippery Rock punt team will come back out yet again, their fourth straight time on the field. Fourth straight time on the field, and the second straight drive where Slippery Rock got the ball on a turnover and failed to capitalize. So there's always, there's always those little things that each team wants to work on, and that is going to be what Slippery Rock wants to work on coming out in the second half. We have 39.6 seconds left in the first quarter that is a very low snap from the long snapper as the punt is going to travel into the end zone for a touchback Trey Johnson duking out the defender right there and Cody we're gonna look at the PSAC West standings right now these teams tied at the top four and one yeah as you said in our open Zach Slippery Rock in California could very well be the PSAC West championship game um, if you want to hypothetically call it that but then Gannon and Indiana and Edinburgh uh, right there in the middle, Gannon in Indiana, right in the rearview mirror. Uh, Indiana started out at the top really strong, but then had a couple big losses that really sent them down in the standings, and California and Slippery Rock both took advantage of that. Yeah, IUP actually lost to this Slippery Rock team, 42-16 to here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. Really sent the Crimson Hawks in a downward spiral this season. So we have a handoff now. A gain of about maybe a yard or two, so... That might be the final play of the first quarter, I believe it will be, as we have under 20 seconds left. California is running up to the play now. It's actually a loss of a yard, though, Cody, so second and 11. Yeah, it's second down and 11, but they're letting the play clock run out. The play clock isn't even moving, so we're at the last five seconds of the quarter, and it's going to the second. 
and it is three nothing California when we come back second quarter action here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. High School Roundup, bringing you the best coverage of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. Tune in for scores, highlights, analysis, and the best plays from the previous week. Plus previews and predictions of the week's biggest games. Standings from across the region and news from around the state. High School Roundup. Catch it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on CUTV. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And Cody, as you see right there, as we come back for second quarter action, the weather looking very ominous and dusk in the background as dark clouds are approaching. We've already had a lot of rain pelted on us already. We were talking about during our break how we were getting all sorts of wet and windy conditions in our face. California now switching sides of the field as uh, James Harrison Company will actually be closer so we can actually see what the Cal Vulcans are going to be doing on this drive. Yeah, and we'd like to apologize to our viewers who uh, have limited visibility because of the conditions, but whenever the rain goes onto our camera lenses, there's little to nothing that we can do. So if it's blowing right into the camera lenses, you know, there's not much that we can do. Harris is going to pass the ball. Has a receiver there, but it is incomplete. And there is a flag on the play, Cody. So Des Green was the intended receiver. It looks like there will be pass interference. Number five, Isaiah Coleman was the defender on the play. Based on where it was thrown, I would have to agree with you on that one, Zach, but it's never official until the uh, head official calls it, and that is going to be the call as James Harris trying to make a quick pass here in the, um, in the, uh, in the, in the pocket, and he does get it off, but the uh, intended receiver was interfered with, so it will be an automatic first down for the Vulcans. And it was actually number two, Quindell Dean. We've called his name a lot since highlighting him in the starting lineup. He was flagged for the pass interference. It is automatic first down at the 30-yard line for the Vulcans, so a new set of downs for the Cal offense. Harris in shotgun. He has Jeff Knox right next to him. Three receivers, twins to the left, solo wide receiver, and Mike Williams to his right. Harris with the ball. Gets it out, and Mike Williams not able to hold on to it. Breaks off his fingertips. It'll be second and down. And the uh, even though the rain has stopped and the wind has stopped, it's still pretty cold out here right now. Uh, the temperature being about 50 degrees, as we said in our uh, when the game started. But it feels a little colder than that. So you got to wonder if the ball um, is a little tougher to hang on to whenever the pass is right to you. We saw a lot of passes bouncing out of the fingertips. Yeah, it's one of those conditions where it could be 50 degrees, but it feels like 40. But then my uh, little comeback to that, well, if it feels like 40, isn't it really 40 degrees out here? But nonetheless, second and 10, Harris. There is, I believe it was a run play as uh, Quindell Dean able to stop the runner. That was Jeff Knox. Yeah, Jeff Knox on the run there, and he was, or that was Fiore, actually, I beg your pardon, on the, um, on the run, or Terrell Johnson, geez, I beg your pardon again. That's the, uh, Terrell Johnson, it's the first time we've really seen him in the backfield, so he's a, uh, surprising us all here today. Yeah, Trey Johnson being back there, it's very surprising. He's done that a lot this season, though, being in the backfield. Uh, we have Knox in the backfield now, third and 10. Harris going downfield, has a receiver, and it is almost complete. Looks like number five, Nadir Brown, the intended receiver, so. We're probably going to see Andrew Surrett for the first time here today as the Vulcans are forced to punt on fourth yeah. down. Yeah, and this is the first time California is going to be punting all game here in the second quarter, 14 minutes and 11 seconds left. And we're seeing a lot of long passes by James Harris here, really attacking the defense through the air. And it has moderately worked. I mean, they've gotten three points out of it. So with all the turnovers and everything, it's worked out good. And that punt almost blocked. They will take a bounce. Super Rock returner able to corral it, and he is tripped up around the 45-yard line. So that is where Slippery Rock will take over California defense. As we look at the regional rankings, the first set came out this past week, Cody. Slippery Rock at number five, California at number eight. The Vulcans really have to do a lot if they want to jump into the top six 
and make the playoffs. Yeah, right there at the top is Westchester and Shepard, who are both undefeated. And Bloomsburg, you know, they're they're going to be they're on the threat of dropping down in the standings with that eight and one record. So um, they have a worse win percentage than the top teams. Now pass complete down the field for the Rock. With those number 13, Julian Harrell has the pass from Nigel Barksdale. Nigel Barksdale still doing a very good job here in this game, uh, getting those passes off. And even though he was really quick, quick to be met, the pass was still caught. Now another pass downfield. That one incomplete. No flag on the play though, so that was number eight, Rodney Gillen, on the coverage for the Vulcans. And the intended receiver number was number seven, Ken Amos, who um, was, it looked like it was overthrown or maybe a miscommunication on the route. We'll never know. But um, regardless, it fell into no man's land incomplete. And now ball at the 49-yard line, California Territory. Empty backfield. Barksdale going to keep it himself. Go right into some pressure by the Cal defense. And gain maybe two yards on the play. Bring up third and eight. Third down threat once again here for the Slippery Rock. California has done a very good job standing on third downs uh, and forcing Slippery Rock to punt. Barksdale, back to pass. He's going to keep it himself, and he will have the first down and a lot more, taken out about the 35-yard line, a gain of 13 on the play. And Cody, a note here, it's hard to tell exactly if he gets the first down or not. The yard markers are on the sideline similar to us, so we can't see them on the field, but I know he had enough there. Yeah, we're located on the visitor side of the stadium. Barksdale with the pass over the middle, and that one is batted down. Looks like Branko Busick on the deflection, so a sophomore linebacker doing a good job getting his hands up, and batting the pass down. Yeah, great job here by California's defense trying to stand up for everything. It's just, it seems like Barksdale is the biggest threat on his own two feet. Now, we're gonna have a stoppage of play. There's the penalty marker. Let's see if it's a false start here against Slippery Rock or maybe even offsides. And it is going to be a false start against Slippery Rock, so it'll make it second and 15 now from the 39 yard line. And I believe the call is on number 65 and that's Kyle Henderson, Cody. I could see you looking at our numerical roster. So, second and 15 now from the 39 yard line. Barksdale back to pass. Almost intercepted by the Vulcan defender. That is Jordan Bowman again. Bowman really hunting down the ball here today for the Vulcans. He's got his eyes on that ball. And if I were to make any prediction in this game, it is that he will come up with a, another interception or two as he uh, almost has that one in and out of his fingertips. A lot of passes we've seen in and out of fingertips here, early, uh, here in this game. It is third and 15 now, Cody. We'll have to see if Slippery Rock can get it close, if they will go for it on fourth down, akin to what California did when they were this close to the end zone. Slippery Rock getting the play from the sideline. There's trips to the left, one receiver to the right, one back in the backfield. Barksdale gets the snap, and he almost taken down. B.J. Stevens, and he is violently hit out of bounds. Pass incomplete. It'll be fourth and 15 now. We'll have to see. It looks like the punt team is going to come out, but I'm not exactly sure yet, Cody. Yeah, they're in interesting field position. A lot of people would call it four down territory, uh, where it's too long for a field goal, but too short for a punt. You know, you see that a lot at the college level. And um, it looks like, Zach, from where we're seeing at, that they're, they are going to punt. Yeah, they are going to punt. It was hard to tell exactly if they're going to or not. The punt travels, bounces. And it's going to take a Slippery Rock bounce and be taken down about the six yard line. So very good for the Slippery Rock special teams to get California pinned deep. We're going to look at the PSAC schedule now, Cody. Shippensburg, Bloomsburg, that was the big matchup on Thursday night. Shippensburg taking down number five in the nation, Bloomsburg. We have a couple other games. Edinburgh, Mercyhurst, Christown, Millersville, Indiana, Clarion, Lockhaven, East Strasburg. That could also highlight the week's slate for the PSAC. Yeah, and as you said in our open, it's it, it's all a puzzle that's waiting to be put together, and the pieces are slowly falling into place as each chapter gets written, including this one here and the hypothetical PSAC West Championship game between the Rock and the Vulcans. We have Nick Grissom in the backfield, and it is a handoff to Grissom. He will work his way up the middle and taken down about the 10-yard line, so a gain of four 
on the play. will make it second and six for the Vulcans. There are 12 minutes and 40 seconds left to go here in the second quarter or the first half if you want to go that route. Nick Grissom once again doing all that he can to get those positive yardage. As we said, he's only had one run that has gone for negative yardage, so that's a big asset for him. And Grissom's still in the backfield. We have two receivers on the play. We also have Ryan McCauley lining up at the tight end position. So we're going to see the play call. What is going to be here? It's officially a second and seven. They will call it. Grissom gets the ball again, works his way up the middle, taken down. It's taken down about the 17 yard line, I thought I heard. So that would be a gain of eight and a new set of downs. But looks like they're going to actually call him short. So hard to tell exactly what the PA announcer said. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Zach, there were some pretty good blocks there by that offensive line. And just only a couple Slippery Rock defenders were able to sneak away. If they didn't sneak away, Grissom could have easily broken through the line and gained a lot of yards. Absolutely, Cody. It is third and two from the 14-yard line. 11.40 left in the first half. Grissom still in there. McCauley in the tight end position. You might see a slant route to him. We've seen that a lot recently over the passing weeks. Fake handoff to Grissom. Harris with the pass. It is incomplete. The rough says it hit the ground before Williams could catch it. And we're probably going to look at it on replay here. Camera three, we're right next to it. We'll look here at the play call. Yeah, the pass was intended for Mike Williams, and the referee says it hit the ground, and there it was. You saw the ball go on the ground and bounce off into Mike Williams' arms. Regardless of what he did to try to buy the call, it was, uh, it was a, the correct call by the official. And now Surrett will be back out there to punt. He's standing on his own goal line, though, Cody. So a lot of pressure here to get the ball out of his own territory. Snap a little high, punt almost blocked. And it's going to be fair caught at the 42 yard line in Cal territory. So that was only a 28 yard punt. Cody, not the longest, but I believe the wind had something to do with that. Yeah, the wind was blowing into Andrew Surrett's face. Um, and so he was punting against it. You know, in the first quarter, it was the other way around. The Slippery Rock punter was punting into the wind. So a lot of their punts were really short. But now that's that's the big factor. Sometimes, you know, you don't know if you want to kick or receive. You're just worried about which end you want to defend because of how the wind is going to be in your favor. So it's good. But th because of the way the rules are written, it's really even. Now hand off to Shamar Green up the middle. He will be met for maybe a two yard gain. It'll be second and eight. Just over 11 minutes left in the first half. And Cody, like you said, uh, defending which area you want to. California will receive the second half kickoff so that might prove into what they want to do uh, I always like to get the ball second half as well as Barksdale deep pass has a receiver and it is incomplete they say he will be out of bounds that is number seven Ken Amos the intended receiver on the play yeah just couldn't he couldn't keep his feet in bounds it looked like he did come up with the reception but not within the legal field of play as we saw the pass it was a big big pass there and a great catch but uh, just barely off screen to your to your left and the, the field judge signaling incomplete that he was out of bounds. And he was right there, so making the perfect call that he could. Barksdale with another deep pass. That one well overthrown of his receiver. Amos again. I believe we have a penalty marker on the play though, so we'll have to see what the marker's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be holding on Slippery Rock, Cody. We'll have to see if this one will make it a third down again. I don't know if you can actually decline it actually is declined Cody so that answers my question there for me thank you Mr. PA announcer it'll be fourth down and eight Slippery Rock forced to punt again and we've said that so many times today Cody yeah this is going to be the fifth punt I believe for uh, Slippery Rock if I counted correctly and uh, with 1047 left to go in the first half California still leading it by a small margin but it's still a lead and Slippery Rock once again giving the ball back uh, Slippery Rock punter gets the ball away, trying to... Oh, and that one hits off Trey Johnson, but it will travel out of bounds, so a lucky break there that a Slippery Rock defender was not there. They will have the ball from right around the five-yard line, so California faced with bad starting position in the last two drives, and we have headlines on the PSAC now. Four PSAC teams are in the first Super Region 1 rankings, 
Westchester's 8-0 for the first time since 1974, and Seton Hill has 21 straight losses. We'd like to see them turn that around. That's a program that could bud into a very big powerhouse in the next couple years. Yeah, Seton Hill is one of those pretty young teams that we've seen here in the PSAC, and um, it takes a lot of time, or it can sometimes, for those teams to build foundations and grow into a franchise, and that's what we're seeing Seton Hill do right now. Absolutely, we have Harris under center. Knox is the back. Gets the pass away. Almost intercepted by the Rock defender. That is number 22, Admire Carter. So doing a good job of trying to get his hands on the ball there, just not able to come down with it. Yeah, and a good job by Harris as he dro dropped back into the end zone. And good protection by the offensive line. You saw he had no pressure on him uh, for probably, could have bought a few more seconds, but if the um, if he wouldn't have thrown it then, I don't know if the uh, receiver would have had a chance to catch it. And Slippery Rock is really stacking the box here on defense, expecting a run play to Jeff Knox. And that is what it will be as Knox breaks himself up the middle, gets to maybe the nine yard line. And it'll be a gain of about four, bring up third and six for the Vulcans. Yeah, California just getting a little bit of breathing room here thanks to Jeffrey Knox Jr. Uh, sneaking his way up the middle gaining four yards or so, or five yards according to the scoreboard here at the stadium. So it's third and five now for the Vulcans. Let's see what they do here. Fiore and Grissom are both in on the play in the backfield. Both of them being sidecars. We have Najia Brown and Mike Williams, the receivers. And we have a penalty flag now. So let's see what the call is going to be here. It might be a false start against the Vulcans, which will really drive them back and make it third and 10 again. The official's looking over at the sideline. He's looking at Slippery Rock's sideline. And it's actually going to be an offensive offsides, Cody. It's something I've never seen before in my days of watching football. Nonetheless, it's going to be at the five-yard line now. Fourth and, or excuse me, third and ten from the five-yard line. So the yardage they got from Jeff Knox, wipe it away. You have to find a new play call here on third and long. Harris with the ball. He will hand it off to Fiore. It's out of his own end zone. But taken down for a loss on the play of about one yard. So Fiore getting nowhere. That will bring out Andrew Serret again for his third straight punt. Fiore being very fortunate there, not, uh, not being brought down in the end zone for a safety. You know, just barely staying in and Surrett is gonna be forced to punt out of his own end zone. So that's gonna be big pressure for him as he'll line up with his heels right on the white marks, um, or close to them anyway. And that's the, um, is a big pressure on Surrett and the snapper now for the Vulcans. Surrett waiting for the snap. He'll get it. Punt is away. And yet again, it is a short punt. This time it will be returned by the Slippery Rock return man. He will break it out to the outside and shoved out of bounds about the 32 yard line. That is number 21, Derek Morgan on the return, I believe. It is actually going to be Admire Carter on the run, but it's very sim very similar numbers and from our vantage point, it's really tough to see sometimes, but uh, still Carter doing a, uh, trying to sneak away on the outside, but not nothing was there as he, get, uh, a couple people missed their blocks, it looked like, so. He was forced out of bounds early on, and he gained more yards going sideways than forwards. And now this will be the best starting field position for the Rock through this game. 8.59 left in the first half. Is a handoff to Shamar Green. He will break it up the middle and breaks through a defender, taken down about the 18-yard line, a gain of 14 on the play, Cody. And Slippery Rock enters the red zone for the first time. Yeah, and number 30 for the Rock, Teddy Blakeman is slow to get off the field. He was limping the running back as he gets hit here. He looked like he got his knees taken out uh, from the side by Dewey McDonald, it looked like. So he was slow to limp off the field, and we might see a substitution come in. Yeah, we probably will. And I honestly thought it was Shamar Green on the handoff. It was Blakeman, like you said, so thank you for correcting me, Cody. That's why I have you along here. Correct my mistakes for me. It's it's first and 10 from the 18-yard line for Slippery Rock as the runner is met immediately. And we might have a penalty flag here, but it looks like the refs are just gonna break up some extracurriculars on the play. 
And right now is when California's defense is really getting tested because this is new to them all game long. Slippery Rock hasn't been in the red zone, and now the defensive, uh, the goal line defense for California is coming in. If you can bend but not break, that would be good. Pass almost intercepted. CJ Towns on the deflection. Uh, Could have gotten his hands on it if he stayed upright. Might have had the interception. Took the dive and deflected the ball away. So it's third and eight from the 16-yard line now. Slippery Rock was going for six on that play. Yeah, and the pass was intended for number 13, Julian Harrell, who uh, looked like he was looking for a flag, but I'm not exactly sure why. I don't know if he was exactly interfered with. Maybe off screen he was, but I couldn't see anything from my vantage point. Now Barksdale, empty backfield. He's going to run it himself. He will get into the end zone. So Slippery Rock is on the board for the first time. It is seven, or excuse me, six to three. Slippery Rock barring the extra point with 8.05 left in the first half. And as I said earlier, Barksdale for this Slippery Rock offense so far has been the biggest threat on his own two feet because California's secondary is doing a really good job, a really good job dropping back. The defensive line is doing a really good job collapsing the runs. But when those two mix and Barksdale can break away with it, that's something that California isn't really prepared for. Now the kick is up and it is good. So when we come back, more first half action. Slippery Rock now leads seven to three. to know what's happening in your area, CUTV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CUTV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back here. More first half action. Terrell Roberson and Gary Brown to receive. It's this kick will be taken by Roberson at about the three yard line. Tries to find a hole. He still will not go down. He finally does. And we'll have to see exactly where the officials will mark him at, maybe around the 30-yard line. It looked like the ball might have come loose there on that return, but the officials were ruling that he was down. And Zach, let's take a look at this touchdown again by Barksdale. Like I've been saying, Barksdale is the biggest threat for this California defense. Once he slips away from that defensive line, the secondary is too busy covering the receivers, doing a phenomenal job at covering the receivers, mind you, but still, uh, Barstale's right, still in the back of their minds and they're having a tough time reacting quick enough to take him down. Yeah, number 53, Jawan Turner had pressure, but he got away and that pass is batted down again. So the California offensive line needs to get their uh, Super Rock defensive line, their hands down and keep from batting balls down, which is what they've really been doing well today. James Harris needs some time to get the ball away to his receivers. Now we have second and 10 from the 30 yard line, just under eight minutes left in the first half. Slippery Rock now with a four point lead at seven to three here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. Harris in the shotgun, he is going to pass. Goes over the middle of the field, that one is in and out of the hands of Trey Johnson, not able to hold on to it. So they'll bring up third down now and you have to wonder Cody if that ball might've been a little wet or his jersey and not able to squeeze it into his bread basket. Yeah, it looked like it went in and out of his hands off of the chest area for for um, for Johnson, but still, you know, third down and 10 for the Vulcans, forced with a long third down here in their own end. Third and 10 from the 30 yard line, 7.50 left, first half. James Harris with the snap, he's going to pass, he's under some pressure, gets it away, and that one is, of course, incomplete. And it will bring up fourth down. The Slippery Rock defense and crowd all 
fired up after that big stop. Yeah, after forcing a three and out, that's going to fire your fans up most certainly. And that's exactly what Slippery Rock did. After they scored the touchdown, they came back. Really stellar perform defensive performance, forcing California to a three and out. Angie Surratt back out there, this time not near his own end zone, so that might help him a little bit. Angie Surratt with the punt, and it is away. That one, a very far punt off the hands of the Slippery Rock player. He's going to be taken down almost in the end zone. He is going to be taken down in the end zone at the two yard line. They're gonna give him his forward progress, Cody. So not a safety on the play. The Cal sidelines calling for the two points. But my goodness, geez, was he lucky there that that wasn't a safety. It looked like he was willing to go back and right there when, when the initial contact was made, even though he was pulled back, that is where they're going to spot him because of the forward progress rule. And um, couldn't really tell who it was on the run there, but the officials doing a great job knowing exactly where he was position-wise. And um, Cal still a stellar good job by Surrett punting against the wind, mind you. He got lucky that it was calmed down a little bit. That was a 68-yard punt. It's Bruxell going deep down the field. Receiver has it. So that is number 15. That is John Shadman. We touched on him in our open, Cody. A great play right there from the senior receiver. Exactly. This, this, this young man here leads the way with 22 yards per catch on average, leading the entire nation in that aspect. Now another screen pass. This one, again, completed. Slippery Rock receiver takes the tumble, though, and a gain of about seven yards out to the 36-yard line. We'll make it second and three on the play. There are seven minutes left on the clock here in this first half, Zach, and Slippery Rock looking to score again. It's actually second and one as Barksdale still has the ball, trying to throw it away, and he'll just throw it out of bounds. And it'll bring up third and one from the 38-yard line. That play took nine seconds off the clock, making it 6.51 left in the first. Yeah, and there will be no intentional grounding rule because of uh, being out of the pocket, so it still remains third down and short for the Rock. So third and one, Barksdale with another pass. That one incomplete, so California's defense stands tall and does not allow Slippery Rock to get the conversion. And Slippery Rock's punt team looks like they will be coming out yet again. This Slippery Rock has only had one drive where they've not had to punt, and that was their touchdown. Yeah, and again, these passes are falling in and out of the hands of the receivers or off the fingertips. So you gotta wonder if the weather conditions are playing into that. We're seeing a lot, seeing it a lot on both sides of the ball by both teams. Yeah, you have to imagine the team that can start catching the ball, they're the ones that are gonna put the, the most points to come away with the victory. Both these teams really haven't done that yet. Whichever one does it first might be the more fortunate of the two. So that punt is away. It'll be take a bounce and taken at the five yard line. So Trey Johnson lets it bounce, thinking it might go to the end zone. And field it down at the five yard line. California has been starting deep in their own zone a lot today. And Cody, the best way to watch all our programming on CUTV is of course our online feed at cutv.calu.edu or you can watch all of our full games and highlights at CUTV Sports 1 on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Taking advantage of the future technology of the Information Superhighway. Uh, Ca California University Television all over that with the live streams and the YouTube channels where you can watch highlight reels, uh, CUTV Sports Specials, News Center packages, everything and everything on that YouTube channel. And Cody, that last punt was a 57 yarder, so California stuck in their own zone. As there is a pass deep down the field. Almost complete, but almost intercepted as well. Number nine, Anthony Saunders for the Rock almost had that one. Yeah, it looked like it looked like at first from when I was seeing that he was going to pull away with that. But uh, very fortunately for Harris and the Vulcans, you know, the, the pass looked like it fell tipped. It fell and tipped off of his fingertips. And so the uh, Vulcans will get a retry. It is second and ten now, six and a half minutes left in the first half. It's going to be a short pass out route to Nadir Brown. And he will complete the pass out to maybe the 10 or 11 yard line, a gain of about six 
on the play. So now with six minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the quarter, leading the way into halftime, it'll be third down and three for the Vulcans. Third and three from the 12-yard line. Need to get to the 15 for a new set of downs. California has had a lot of three and outs lately. They want to change their fortunes here. Trey Johnson's in the backfield. They will not give it to him. The pass is going to be incomplete. No receiver was there. Bad timing by the players on offense, and that will bring up yet another punt situation. It seemed like Slippery Rock started the game with a lot of punts. Now California, it's their turn to do the same. Yeah, there was absolutely no California defenders, or excuse me, receivers. There was only Slippery Rock defenders around that play. And, um, you know, it could have been a little bit of a miscommunication on the play itself or on the routes. And that's one thing that this, that these teams, it's so important to them, but a lot of people overlook it. Punt is away, it is a short punt. It will be fielded about the 45 yard line in Rock territory and be taken out right at midfield. So Slippery Rock with 5.56 left, only needs 50 yards to go. And looking at the Slippery Rock schedule, the only loss they had was at Gannon, an upstart Gannon team, started the year really well, falling off lately though. Yeah, and a lot of these wins, you know, there isn't a game where they haven't scored 40 or more points with the exception of Clarion, and they still scored 34 in that one. So even though um, that's a, that's all of their wins, their loss, they only got 27. So this this team has been a huge offensive powerhouse all season. Absolutely, Cody. Maybe the way to beat Slippery Rock is held them down and you get a big lead and make them come back. And Slippery Rock might not be the team that can come back, much like uh, Bloomsburg we saw on Thursday night against Shippensburg. Pass incomplete. That was number 17, Dutriel, the intended receiver. Dutrio uh, having quite a quite a little bit of trouble catching uh, some of these passes. He's had a lot of them either fall incomplete at his feet or uh, bounce in and out of his hands. We saw the one really early on where he was really frustrated with himself. <laughs> now Barksdale with the ball again. This time pass is complete to the 45-yard line in Cal territory. That's a gain of six. That will make it third and four for the Rock. And the Rock go crossing midfield and going into California territory. We haven't really seen them uh, get pushed back in their own end that much. Now it's an option play here. And the first down is received for the Rock. And they'll be shoved out about a seven yard gain on the play. Yeah, it was a third and short play, but Barksdale doing a really good job pitching it to the outside, uh, almost keeping it for himself, but instead pitching it to Jimmy Zubik, who uh, takes it for plenty of yards, plenty of enough yards to get the first down. First and 10 from the 37 yard line. Handoff up the middle, runner is met almost immediately, a gain of about two on the play. That will bring up second and eight. Five minutes and seven seconds left to go, Zach, and Slippery Rock uh, looking to put an exclamation point on this half, coming back after California took the early lead and going into halftime with the momentum. Second and eight from the 35, another handoff. This one, a flea flicker. Brooksdale under pressure, has the pass away, incomplete. And that looks like it was number 17, Dutriel, who is the intended receiver. So yet again, not able to hold on to the ball. Yeah, and again, Dutrio uh, having trouble with the receptions. But regardless, this is a great trick play here by Slippery Rock, as the, um, as you said, Zach. And the, uh, you know, California's defense not easily fooled, and they weren't fooled there. Yeah, California's coverage unit is doing a good job of blanketing the receivers. And that was a illegal forward pass, I believe, Cody. So. Or excuse me, actually it's a chop block. I can't hear what the PA announcer says and I'm being called sunshine for not knowing that. But nonetheless, there's a 15 yard penalty and that will make it second down, I believe again for the Rock. And we'll have to see exactly what the call's gonna be. It's, the ball's at the 50 yard line. Don't know exactly how many yards they have to go though. It's now Barksdale trying to get away from pressure. Still being pressured, gets the pass away. Incomplete. Two Vulcans defenders were there on the play. 
It's going to be third down and 23 now for the Rock. 23 miles, it may seem like, after that 15-yard penalty with uh, four minutes and 40 seconds left to go on the clock. And that's actually a pass interference play, Cody. I believe they called it a number 47 for the defense. I believe if I heard that right, or 27. I'm not exactly sure. Hard to hear, but that's an automatic first down, so Slippery Rock doesn't have to worry about third and 23 anymore. Yeah, it's, I'm sure Slippery Rock would much rather have a first down and 10 than a third down and 23. Absolutely. Barksdale hands it off up the middle. One defender to beat, and he is tripped up. That is number 32, Brett Crenshaw on the run. And here comes Slippery Rock's offensive line waking up and creating a big hole for uh, for the running back, number 32, Brent, Brett Grenshaw to run through. Barksdale, quick stream pass. That pass gets out to maybe the eight yard line and that was Dutriel this time coming down with it. Yeah, Dutriel, <laughs> he's probably thanking, thanking a lot of people right now for being able to make that catch. He's had a lot of trouble early on uh, and then coming up with a big one here in this quarter. First and goal from the eight yard line now, Cody. 4.05 left in the second quarter. Barksdale, empty backfield. He'll take it himself up the middle. And be met about the five yard line. A gain of three will be second and goal. It's still, yes, as you said, second and goal with three minutes and 49 seconds left. And Zach, it's always the team. I feel like a broken record when I say this. The team that scores the, during the last few minutes of a half, really carries a lot of momentum. Handoff, goes nowhere, a gain of about two on the play, so it'll be third and goal from the three yard line, and Cody, we'll have to see if Slippery Rock doesn't get it. Do they go for the automatic field goal? No, it's really not automatic, it's a chip shot, really. Or do they try and force California to stop them again? If they don't get it, force them back into deep in their own territory. Well, regardless of what they do, if they do get the field goal, it's a two score game, so that may be what they want to look at. And we have just over three minutes left in the first half. California will receive the ball first in the second half. That might help them in their comeback attempt here, as we are going to get a timeout, I believe, now from Slippery Rock. Try and go over what they exactly want to do here on this play, Cody. But nonetheless, uh, California, they need to stop uh, Slippery Rock here if they want to keep this close. Slippery Rock gets a touchdown and makes it 14 to three possibly. They only get the field goal, it's only a touchdown game. And we saw early in the year, California able to come back at Hillsdale, uh, come back to win that one. They've had some comeback attempts, also fail, but California always likes to be in the lead and that's when they do best. Yeah, they do and um, Zach, I feel like uh, I might be speaking too soon here on this one but I feel like it should be really interesting to note that the last time California did not score a touchdown was two years ago against this Slippery Rock team. The final score, 17 to three. <laughs> yeah, so our, uh, I like to call it our snack pack of facts here on CUTV is we have our weekly last time California did blank segment that I always look forward to hearing as we have third and goal now from the three yard line. 2.56 left, Slippery Rock looking to extend their lead. Now we have a change in formation as a couple of receivers flank out and a tight end as well. Barksdale going to hand it off, enters the reverse, looks like he's going to pass. Receiver wide open in the end zone and is complete. That is Josh Shadman, makes it a 13 to three, Slippery Rock. Pending the extra point now, and all of a sudden, it's a two-score game uh, all over again. Slippery Rock on the threat of taking an 11-point lead, but this is a great reverse by the Slippery Rock offense. On the pass there was number six, Michael Bungavengo, uh, to, to the receiver, number 15, John Shademan, who, uh, is Bonchavingo, excuse me, I beg your pardon on that one. And the extra point is good, so 14 to three, Slippery Rock. 2.49 left in the first half. When we come back, more action here on CUTV. With 18 institutions, my conference is the largest league across all NCAA.
NCAA classifications. With nearly 7,000 student athletes competing in 23 championships, my conference sponsors the most championships in Division II. With a 78% academic success rate, my conference graduates student athletes well above the national average. We compete with passion. We take pride in our efforts in the arena and in the classroom. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Passion, pride, Pennsylvania. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. We are back here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium where kickoff is about to commence. Gary Brown and Terrell Roberson back to receive for the Vulcans. Kick is away. Looks like Roberson will be the one to receive it right at the two yard line. Try to find an open hole and he does right at the middle. Gets to the outside and taken down about the 26 yard line. And the kicker for uh, Slippery Rock, number 10, Brian Shaw, doing a good job here sending those kicks right at the goal line or inside the five. So really pressuring the return man for California, whoever it may be, to bring it back and not giving them the obvious touchback. So it's a good judgment with the wind and everything uh, taken into consideration. Yeah, the wind has picked up yet again as it's blowing right at us again, Cody. We can see the flags on the field goal post moving very violently. We have to see exactly what California wants to do here to try and get the score a little bit closer. Harris will be back to pass, under pressure, gets it away. And we'll have to see if there's going to be an intentional grounding penalty here. There is a penalty marker down. We'll have to see, looks like it might be intentional grounding if I could tell what the signal was right from the referee. Even though it may be intentional grounding, I thought I saw Nadir Brown try to run up the near sideline uh, to get the uh, to get to the pass. We have the ref about to make his call. He lines up right behind some California players, so hard to tell. Holding against California, so that one not as serious as intentional grounding. It will be another first down play. <laughs> But if it was intentional grounding, that would have been a loss of downs, Cody, and that really would have hurt the Vulcans. But now they get another opportunity. It'll be first and I believe 20 from the 17 yard line. Yeah, and especially if they would have lost a down, them being pinned back in their own end. So many times we have seen in this quarter, the first quarter really wasn't that much of a problem, but in the second quarter, Slippery Rock's special teams have stepped up. Absolutely, as we have a pass now, that one is dropped. Nadir Brown not able to hold on to it. Nadir Brown, through the years, has had some trouble catching the ball, much like number 17, Dutriel, has for Slippery Rock. But Nadir Brown, you have to watch out. He can make the big play when it counts. Yeah, he's what you call a clutch receiver, um, but making those big catches when it matters. Now we have second and 20 from the 17-yard line for the Vulcans. They are down 14 to three with two and a half minutes left in the first half. Harris will hand it off, it is Knox, and he will get to about the 19 yard line, so a gain of two will bring up third and 18, and California's really gonna have to dig deep into the playbook to get a play that can drive them 18 yards, as I believe Slippery Rock is going to take a timeout, I believe, try and stop the clock here. Yeah, two minutes and 23 seconds are left to go in this first half, and and as we just got confirmation from the PA announcer here, it, it was a timeout by Slippery Rock, so that will be their second charge timeout of the half. They only have one remaining. And California, as you've been saying, Zach, is, have been having a little bit of trouble getting out of their own end here late in the first quarter and all through the second. So it, if, they, um, if they're able to sneak out and bust into Slippery Rock territory, I believe personally that they'll be able to at least threaten to put more points on the board, but they should be able to knowing how uh, productive this offense can be sometimes. Yeah, I think what really matters is the defense. They have done a good job. They have allowed 14 points today. Coming into today, they had allowed 23 total as the sun is coming out and blinding me as I talk to you, Cody. But um, I think the defense, if they could force some more turnovers, uh, Jordan Bowman almost has two interceptions. Uh, CJ Towns could have had an interception. That was before a touchdown to Nigel Barksdale. I think the interceptions and the turnovers will really help 
to mount a comeback for California during the second half, if that should so happen. Harris, back to pass, under pressure, and he is taken down as the Rock gets to him. That is number 97 for the Rock, Matt Peacock. We touched on him in our open, and he showed us exactly why. Yeah, Matt Peacock leads this team with four and a half sacks, and now five and a half if you want to count that one. And Cody, we have a flag here on the play. Looks like it might be holding on the defense. That might be an automatic first down, so let's get the call here. And as the wind starts to pick up, you're starting to see our cameras starting to get a little shaky. We apologize for that. It actually is not a repeat of third, or excuse me, it is not an automatic first down. It is a repeat of third down. I believe it'll be a 10 yard penalty. So it's third and 10 now. Actually, it might be third and eight. So California getting a big break there, not taking the sack, have another chance to get some points on the board on this drive. 2.13 left in the first half. Yeah, big break for the Vulcans, big break. Harris, in shotgun, back to pass. Has a receiver, it is incomplete. Receiver taken down violently at the end. And nonetheless, it'll be fourth down again for the Vulcans. Andrew Surrett back out for, I believe this is the fifth straight time. And then Surrett is gonna be faced with the wind again. The wind is going to be blowing in towards him and the punt is gonna be affected because of that. But the one thing that California is probably looking up at, that keeping their hopes up, is that they will get the ball back to start the second half. So they have a chance to get themselves back into this game and make it a one score game. Absolutely, Cody. It's now we have a delayed snap. Surratt gets the punt away. That one is going to take a bounce. Be marked at the 40 yard line in Slippery Rock territory. So Slippery Rock with a minute 52 left in the first half has premium position to put some more points on the board and extend their lead. Yeah, one thing that has been in Slippery Rock's favor during this first half was field position. Uh, we saw California get a few good breaks with their field position to start off the game. And that's what led to their initial field goal by Cody Nuzo, a 44 yarder. But then Slippery Rock once again really stepping through on special teams. It um, really seemed to wake up for them and it has worked, giving them great field position for their offense. First and 10 from the 41. A short screen pass to Shadman. Tries to break it up the middle of the field and he's taken down in the 45 yard line. And that's a gain of I believe 14 and a new set of downs. And, th and this was just as about, I was about to say that Slippery Rock hasn't been in their own territory that much, but they weren't in there for that long anyway. So. They're right into California territory once again. Barksdale, fake handoff and a screen pass again. I believe that was number seven, Ken Amos on the reception and it was, and there is a penalty flag on the play though, Cody, so we'll have to see what the call is going to be. There's a minute and 31 seconds left to go in this half. Slippery Rock really trying to hurry up. They only have one timeout left. Um, really trying to conserve any amount of the clock they can to put more points on the board. And we are about to get the call. Looks like it might go against Slippery Rock based on the way their sideline is reacting. Still not sure though as they're still talking about uh, the penalty. And now we are going to take an, an even further look at this one as we might honestly see them pick up the flag and wave it off. Usually this is what happens when they take such a long time to talk about it. But the referee really looking at the head official and saying that I saw a penalty. So we might have to see what happens here. But a minute 31 left. The last thing California wants is for Slippery Rock to score again. <laughs> and now, going to get the call. It's going to be illegal, an eligible receiver downfield against the offense. So that is going to be a repeat of first down. I believe it's a five yard penalty. So right at midfield, I believe it'll be first and 15. Yeah, and Slippery Rock. Uh, having a few bad breaks here with their offense. You've seen uh, that we saw this illegal uh, ineligible receiver man downfield and we saw a couple false starts uh, that backs them up five yards, but they've really false taken the back seat because they've been producing so well offensively, it doesn't matter anyway. It's, it's been, uh, they've been negated in one or two plays after and we forget all about them. 
You know, I'd see this might be the time for a big turnover for California. Barksdale back to pass. Goes deep downfield, has a receiver, and there is going to be a pass interference call on that one. Without a doubt, that was Jordan Bowman on the coverage. And Cody, I can see it all the way from where we're at. He was blanketed all over the receiver. It was set Slippery Rock right up in the end, or the red zone. Julian Harrell was the intended receiver that was interfered with. And you can see Calif California's side isn't that happy about it, but it is our, uh, it looks like it is the correct call as he was interfered with going down to the, uh, going down towards his own end zone. He's looking for a flag there and he did get one that time. Yeah, the flag was even thrown before he asked for it, Cody. I could see the yellow laundry on the field. A minute 15 left, first and 10 from the 35 yard line. Barksdale gonna keep it himself. He has room right up the middle and taken down about the 25 yard line, a gain of 10. And again, Barksdale, uh, Barksdale, excuse me, showing some good offensive footwork showing us that he's more of a slash player than anything. Um, much like we've seen um, a, a bunch of professional football players that are like that, that can both run and pass or um, pass and run. I either way, it inverses. And now it looks like Slippery Rock will be taking a timeout, so it's um, going to be their last one. And it's actually going to be a California timeout. So I beg your pardon on that one, Zach. You are correct. That with a minute even left on the clock here in the first half, we'll have to see what California's defense can dial up to stop Barksdale and company from getting into the end zone again. Uh, being down by two touchdowns at halftime is nothing major in my opinion. I think California has the ability to come back from that. But being down by three uh, or more possessions, that could be a big... Um, deflector for coming back. I think that California might find it in themselves that they can't do that, which would really hurt their self-esteem and motivation, but I think they can still do it. They just have to have a big play turn their way. Yeah, there's still plenty of football left to be played. There's 31 minutes left to go in this whole entire game. Uh, this, this last minute here in the first half may not seem um, as important as in the um, as in the next two quarters, but all they're looking for is, like you said, that big offensive spark. It could be a big catch, it could be a turnover, it could be a big hit for all I know. It's just something to wake up the team and push them forward. Now a fake screen, Barksdale taking it up the middle. He is taking it out and it's a fumble. And it looks like Slippery Rock is actually going to recover it though, so we'll have to see here who has the ball when they come out of the pile. There's a massive pile up there. Right on top of it is um, right on top of it is number 10 for the Vulcans, and that is Jordan Bowman, who's been get, getting uh, threatening some big interceptions. But it looks like Slippery Rock does recover, Zach. The Slippery Rock does recover the ball, but I'm curious as to why the ball is still remaining there, because technically that was a forward fumble, Cody. So, but uh, they might say that California. Knocked it into the ground, so Silver Rock will take over at the two yard line. That was actually a break for them with 50 seconds left. First and goal. And as a handoff into the end zone goes, uh, I believe that is Crenshaw number 32. Silver Rock now leads 20 to three. 20 to three, pending the extra point, and this is a big, the big score that Slippery Rock was looking for. It's the last minute of the half, and here they are putting six more points, pending seven on the board. There's 44 seconds left, and in any sport that has a clock, whenever you score in the, in the last minute or the first minute, before or after any uh, intermission of some kind, it's big. And that kick is good, so. We have a 21-3 score when we come back here on CUTV. The last 45 seconds of the first half from Mahalik Thompson Stadium here in Slippery Rock.
and kickoff is taken right at the goal line by Terrell Roberson. Tries to break it to the outside and taken down about the 16 yard line, so not a big return there. And the clock stops at 34.7 seconds. Yeah, and we're gonna take a look at this touchdown here by number 32, that is Brett Grenshaw on the run, being very, showing very good patience, waiting for his offensive line to open up the hole, and whenever he saw what was there, he took it, and that's what led the way to the touchdown. You know, if he would have stepped in there a second too early, he would have been taken down short of the goal line, and uh, Slippery Rock would have had to try again. 21-3 is your score, 34 seconds left. Harris back to pass. Goes down the field, and that one incomplete. So Harris, I think the big problem is not the win, but he's not really having a chemistry with his receivers today and getting the timing down that they need. Yeah, there's a few little miscommunications on the routes, but with 32 seconds left, California has two timeouts to work with. Uh, so we should see one last quality drive from them. Second and 10 from the 18 yard line. Another pass, that one is batted down. So yet again, the pass goes nowhere past the line of scrimmage. That'll make it third and 10. If California doesn't convert here, Cody, Slippery Rock might get the ball back with excellent field position and try to get more of a score here during the first half. Yeah, two straight incomplete passes for Harris and company. Cal or excuse me, Slippery Rock doing very good on the defensive side in that aspect. Third and 10. It is a handoff to Knox. And he will be taken down immediately. So California forced with a fourth down now. And Slippery Rock will take their final timeout, I believe. Yeah, Slippery Rock is going to take the final timeout to stop the clock at 22 seconds. So they will get the ball back. It, it, they will get the ball back one more time. You know that prevented California from just running the clock out uh, on fourth down. So with that timeout, Slippery Rock will get it again. And uh, like I've been saying before, going into halftime, there's, a, there's always those little things that each team wants to work on. In my opinion, I believe for California, it would be gaining better field position or converting more first downs. And on the Slippery Rock side of the ball, the dropped passes have really been an issue. For both of the teams it's been present, but for Slippery Rock especially. And um, you know, if they can c catch more of those passes, the score could easily be 51 to three instead of 21 to three. Absolutely, Cody, and Slippery Rock will look to add some more points on the board here. Surrett will punt, and the wind blowing right at him. So that punt looks like it probably will not travel very far unless he puts all the power he has into it. So Slippery Rock might get good field position here. Punt is away, and like I said, it's not very far. Taken at the 40 yard line, it takes a bounce. Taken down at the 37 yard line. As we have a lot of whistles going on, but I don't think anything major from the play. With 15 seconds left, Slippery Rock might take a last Hail Mary attempt. And we have to look out for the receiver. We touched on John Shadman, averages 22 uh, yards per reception. Could be the one you go to standing at six feet tall. Yeah, and Slippery Rock is a team that in this situation, they won't lay on it and take a knee. They're like how you would compare um, any professional football team or other college football team that just keeps piling on the points. And there's a penalty, Zach. And we're out to get the call here. And it's an offside against Slippery Rock. So that will repeat fourth down, which helps California's cause. We'll take more time off the clock, which might force Slippery Rock to just take a knee. Go to halftime with the lead. Don't let anything crazy happen. And then both teams gonna have to make the adjustments they need to to come back and try and secure victory here in the PSAC West Championship figuratively. Yeah, and that's the one thing that a lot of people are, want, are side to side on is like, do you take a knee or do you try for more points? And that punt was almost blocked, so. Lucky break for California there. As we have five seconds left, and the refs are gonna blow it dead at three and a half seconds. So I don't think Slippery Rock will try anything with that short amount of time. You don't want the ball to be intercepted and run back and let California take momentum into halftime while Slippery Rock has it for the moment. And the Rock's doing a phenomenal job lately on offense of getting into the end zone. But I believe 
that's due to the starting field position they've had. We've touched on that a couple times. Yeah, the field position has been really uh, in Slippery Rock's favor. Uh, the special teams really stepping through on that, but it also doesn't help California's cause that Surrett has been punting from deep in his own end and sometimes in the end zone from the very back of the end zone. So that doesn't help his cause out at all, but still Slippery Rock getting a bunch of breaks uh, with the punts. Absolutely, Cody. And they're actually gonna run a play as Barksdale's gonna try and find a receiver. He breaks out of a tackle, breaks out of another one. Still going, just throws it away and that will be the end of the first half, so nothing doing there. Slippery Rock will take a 21-3 lead into halftime. When we come back, the Vulcans will receive first here on CU TV from the beautiful Mahalik Thompson Stadium. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. CU TV always has the action, and now you can too by ordering CU TV programming on DVD. To own your favorite CU TV moments, just send $16.95 in a check payable to SAI, care of CU TV programming order, 250 University Avenue, California, PA, 15419. Order now. Need to know what's happening in your area? CU TV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CU TV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. High School Roundup, bringing you the best coverage of high school football in Western Pennsylvania. Tune in for scores, highlights, analysis, and the best plays from the previous week, plus previews and predictions of the week's biggest games, standings from across the region, and news from around the state. High School Roundup. Catch it. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays on CUTV. Vulcan Football 2013 is brought to you by First Niagara. JD Waterproofing. UPMC Health Plan. Lee Supply Company. The Physical Therapy Institute. And Trib Total Media. Now, Cody, we are back here for the second half of action. It's about to get underway in about a minute. And we are going to have our first half stats in a moment. I believe they are brought to you by Trip Total Media. As we can hear some of the fan noise in the background. As we do have our halftime stats brought to you by Trip Total Media. And as we saw in our tail of the tape early on in the game, the offensive yards have been really piling up on Slippery Rock side. And these halftime stats do not lie. 283 yards. Uh, compared to 123 for California. And Slippery Rock does have one turnover, so that's where that turnover margin thing came in. Uh, the turnover margin was heavily in California's favor, even though both of these teams were in the negatives. Absolutely, and we're gonna look at some of the replays here. First one from California, this is the end around pass from Nadir Brown to Mike Williams. It was a very long play, and Cody, it actually is the longest play for California all day. California quarterbacks, including Brown, are a total three for 20 today for 71 yards. And that's just not gonna get the job done this game. Yeah, and that pass was actually what led to California's field goal, which was their only points here so far, as now we're gonna be seeing the quarterback, Nigel Barksdale, 
for uh, Slippery Rock make all kinds of spectacular passes on these highlights, but we'll have to cut them short as second half action is underway. And Roberson will take it out of his own end zone for the return. He tries to break it outside, and he is taken down around the 25-yard line. That's where California will start. And Cody, an interesting note here, Slippery Rock has been outscored in the second half all year, specifically the third quarter. And as we look here, James Harris is still the quarterback for this offense, so no quarterback change. We might have presumed we might see Cody Schroeder come in. Harris still out there. This is the time when California can start to make their comeback on this drive. And I know that California has been a second half team during this season. I know at Hillsdale during the first half, they didn't score a single point and then they ended up coming back and winning it, so anything can happen. Harris back to pass, has a receiver, and it is complete. Nadir Brown with the catch. We'll have to see exactly how much he gained on that one. It's like we said, it's hard to tell just exactly uh, based on our vantage point. It looks like he got maybe five or six yards. Yeah, being taken down at about the 31-yard line. The scoreboard is reading second and three, so second and four according to our CU TV graphic. Still the same idea. And now that pass, Des Green drops it and is incomplete, so had to pass right on his number. He's not able to corral it in, and that's what really plagued the Vulcans in the first half, not getting the passes caught in the receiver's hands. Yeah, and then we're seeing that here again. Um, on the, the other way around, the passes are being dropped. So third down and four now for the Vulcans. Third and three. Knox up the middle as he is stopped. And I doubt he got the first down. It's hard to tell. Yard markers are on our side, so we'll have to see. It is, the PA announcer said it's spotted close to the first down. Not exactly sure if he got it all the way, though. It's actually going to be fourth and three. The Vulcans are going to go for it, though. Harris will go for it. We'll see if he got it. It was fourth and one at the 35. Hard to tell. We can't see the spot, but it looks like they're going to give him the first down. So the Vulcans will stay out on the field. And I'll tell you what, it didn't really look like Harris went much of anywhere. Um, it might have been a little bit of a generous spot, but who knows? You know, as you've been saying, Zach, from our vantage point, it's really tough to see these things sometimes. And fortunately for the Vulcans, James Harris barely getting enough yards for the first down. It's now first and 10. The first minute of the third quarter is under wraps, and we're entering the second. And now we have an official's timeout now, so. We might get a measurement here, but since they already moved the chains, I don't know if they can actually do that. So, actually, Cody, they're going to look at James Harris. He might have tweaked his knee a little bit. Uh, we'll see in the replay here. We might see what could have happened. Yeah, there was a big pileup. There was a big pileup there, but the um, looks like James Harris's helmet uh, got hit right on his ear hole and that could be making uh, his ear ring a little bit. It could be a little disoriented. Uh, you know, we saw him sitting up on one knee, so he's not like he's down on the ground or anything. And he is being taken out, Cody, so we're probably going to see Cody Schroeder come in. He is warming up on the sidelines, so an interesting development here. We hope the best for Harris in a quick recovery. Might be a concussion, and there are some tests, I believe, but I think he has to sit out there a minute of this game, so Cody Schroeder will be the one to try and lead the comeback for the Vulcans today. And he did exactly just that at Hillsdale. Like I said uh, earlier on in the start of the second half, he, uh, the California Vulcans didn't score a single point in the first half of that game, and they came back and won it. So Schroeder looking to lead the way here again. First and 10 from the 35. Schroeder rolling out to his right, has a receiver, and it is complete to Mike Williams. Mike Williams being very nimble there on the near sideline, staying in bounds and gaining a few extra yards, about five extra yards, getting enough for another first down to move the chains it looked like. It will be first and 10, but right there, you know, really good job evading the tackle and staying in bounds all at the same time. First and 10 from the 45 yard line. Actually, excuse me, they're gonna call it second and one from the 45. Under a little bit of pressure. Has the reception. That looks like Des Green as he's still up and taken down in Slippery Rock territory. So California doing good on this drive so far. Yeah, Desmond Green there coming up with the big catch right up the middle, right on the S of Slippery Rock. And, um, you know, just he evaded the tackle there. On the attempted tackle was number five, Isaiah Coleman, but couldn't wrap him up. But 
Desmond uh, Green didn't really gain that much after it anyway. So first and 10 from the 46 yard line, Slippery Rock territory. Schroeder with the snap, goes deep down the field. That one incomplete, almost intercepted. Two Rock defenders were there. That one well short of the intended receiver. It will be second down and 10 now for the Balkans after this pass by Schroeder. Schroeder going through the air here in this second half. Uh, we haven't seen a single run play yet to my knowledge. Uh, it's been all passes and it has worked up until that incomplete pass. It is second and 10, like you said, no run plays. So trying to really move it through the air. Yeah, trying to find some success there. Schroeder in shotgun. Now it is a handoff to Fiore as he will gain some positive yardage. And he's still going, not going down very easily. He will go down. Looks like he has enough for a new set of downs. That's the kind of run we saw last week against Gannon, the tough physical running that uh, led the Balkans to victory. Yeah, Fiore doing a good job here. Uh, you know, this, this, this California offense seems like they've been uh, stepping up in terms of evading tackles, breaking tackles up. You know, we saw a few missed tackles by Slippery Rock, so um, it's very, working out very fortunate for them, giving a few extra yards. Now Fiore, another handoff up the middle, gaining some more positive yardage. Looks like he's gonna be marked down about the 26 yard line. Hard to tell exactly what down it is. The scoreboard says third and five from the 26. So, although I don't believe it's actually third down, it's gonna be second down. The scoreboard did not update, so it is going to be second down, Cody. Yeah, once again, Fiore uh, knocking on the door of the red zone here. California hasn't seen uh, Slippery Rock territory this deep since the first quarter. Schroeder, back to pass again. Pass is complete. It looks like that was Des Green, so Schroeder finding his target in Des Green a couple times on this drive, moves the chains again. Yeah, exactly, and Schroeder, you know, this has been what he's good at all season was these short passes. You know, he's able to deliver them right on the mark and get the receptions, and that's what can really move the, move the ball down the field as they march onward. Schroeder hands it off, and Grissom is taken down for a loss in a play, Cody, so right there, Grissom, that's only the second time he's been taken down for a loss all season. Only the second time Grissom trying to sneak his way through. We highlighted on him in the uh, earlier in the first half during our open 81 yards and a touchdown last week against Gannon. And um, st still being very progressive here even though he got the loss there. Second and 13 and 11.35 left in the third quarter. Schroeder going to his left, has a receiver and it is complete. Looks like number 15, Kawan Scott on the reception. Kawan Scott is a name that we haven't called out that much, if at all, in the first half. And here he comes giving a big catch, big catch there for the um, for the Vulcans. It, it's a um, going to be third and five according to the scoreboard again. Third and five from the 14-yard line, just over 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Schroeder doing a good job moving the ball here on this drive to start the second half. Schroeder rolling to his right now. Tries to find a receiver. He's gonna run it himself. He has the first down and more. Dives for the end zone. And it is a touchdown, California. So 21 to nine now. The Vulcans cut into the lead. And like we said, they have been a second half team all year. They start off well here for offense. Cody Schroeder showing exactly what he can do on this offense. He, Nigel Barksdale has been doing this all game long taking it, keeping it for himself, taking it into the end zone. Um, he has a touchdown too, and now Cody Schroeder showing exactly what he can do, and the ball just barely snuck in there. It would have hit the pylon had it been still standing, and by the rule, if the ball does hit the pylon, it is still a touchdown, so it counts. And now it is 21 to 10 off the extra point from Cody Nuzzo, so Vulcans cut into the lead when we come back. More second half action on CU TV. Watch CU TV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, 
and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CU TV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. And we are back here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. As you see on your Physical Therapy Institute scoreboard, it's 21-10 now. Vulcan scoring. First drive of the second half is kickoff is away from Cody Nuzo. It's taken. And an open hole on the sideline. Returner has a lot of room and he's shoved out of bounds around the 40 yard line. So a lucky break there for California as they need to maintain their defense to try and come back in this one. Yeah, and Zach, we're gonna take a look at this touchdown again by Cody Schroeder. Um, he's looking down the field, looking left, looking right, then looking left again, then looking right again. And all of a sudden he sees this wide open hole, takes it in for the touchdown, so phenomenal play. But there's a flag on the kickoff so it's gonna be against Slippery Rock, Zach, as we will see the position of the ball change. Yeah, we presume it's against Slippery Rock. We can't say it is automatically just yet. We're gonna get the call from the ref. Is he still conversating with the other officials? And we are going to get the call. It looks like it's going to be an offsides against California. And holding against Slippery Rock. Those will offset. And it sounds like we might get a re-kick. So don't let that kickoff fool you, folks. We're going to have to do it all over again. Cody Nuzzo are going to have to set the ball up on the team one more time. 10 minutes and 42 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Second half action just underway. And California striking very early on in this second half. Cody Schroeder leading the way with those short passes down the field. Yeah, Slippery Rock. Wants to get some good field position out of this one. The special teams for California needs to stop them if they want to try and come back. The defense needs to step up. Turnovers will really help in that battle to come back. Done by only 11 now with 10.42 left in the third quarter. So Nuzo putting the ball on the tee again. So you are not having deja vu, ladies and gentlemen. We are going for another re-kick after the offsetting penalties. As Nuzo is back. This time I'm sure California making sure they don't line up offsides. And the kick is away. Kick taken about the five yard line, maybe actually the 10 yard line. And the returners taken down around the 26 or 27 yard line. That's where the Rock will start to try and defend. And actually they're saying that this ball was fumbled. We're gonna get a conversation here from the refs. We're gonna get a conversation from the refs, and they do say it's slippery rock ball, so we'll have to look here on the replay, Cody. Yeah, California uh, trying to buy this call here, but the return man was just going down. It looked like he was down right there. There were too many bodies in front of where the ball was, so you couldn't really see, but coming out of the pile, um, coming out of the pile for the Vulcans looked like Jeffrey Knox, who uh, tried to buy the fact that he got the fumble, but uh, the officials ruled him down by contact, so it remains Slippery Rock's ball. Yeah, it looked like the returner was down, Cody, so we have a run here to the outside. Breaks it upfield. Gain to about the 35-yard line. That's a gain of eight on the play. It'll be second and two. Second down and short for the Rock right now as they uh, are, t as you said, Zach, have had quite a few third-quarter troubles. Um, I believe it was you said they they play to not lose, but rather not to win. As now, Dutrell is taken down in the backfield for a loss, I believe. It's going to be third and five, I think that's what they're gonna call it. That's what the scoreboard says. We'll have to see as Dutrell has his struggles again and taken down. It's gonna be actually third and four, so no loss on the play, a gain of about one. Barksdale getting the play call from the sideline and Coach Mahalik. Barksdale with a snap, fake handoff, screen play. California reads it and might have him, but it looks like he just had enough for a first down to make it first and 10 for the Rock. Yeah, they have stopped the clock at nine minutes and 39 seconds to move the chain, so 
That was enough for a first down after this screen pass um, to the far side. So it did work out for them. And it's a handoff to Crenshaw up the middle. He gets to about maybe the 46 yard line. It's a gain of seven on the play. Actually, they're gonna call him at the 50 yard line. So it's a gain of 11, new set of downs. Barksdale back to pass. That one incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10 right at midfield. Yeah, it looked like the intended receiver for Slippery Rock, number 27, Ken Amos, who um, almost would have had it, but it looked like he slipped up on the turf a little bit. Right there on your screen, you see him fall down, and it was in and out of his uh, abdominal region. And it's just unfortunate for him as he took a tumble there. Yeah, Barksdale, fake handoff, back to pass yet again, goes downfield, has a receiver, and he completes it. That's almost down to the 31-yard line. That's a gain of 19. And that previous play is, is negated, and even more as the uh, yards necessary for the first down have been gained with this pass to almost almost redeeming himself and a lot more after that stumble that he had on the previous play. California really needs to stop here on this drive, first and 10. And it's gonna be a pass from Barksdale. This one, incomplete. They say it touched the turf, so second and 10 now from the 31. Second and 10 and the clock stops with eight minutes and 54 seconds left, Zach. And the uh, even though Schroeder may be uh, allowing this California offense to score more points. The threat is always there for Slippery Rock to score more as well. Absolutely, Cody, as we have a fake end around and a run up the middle and a fake screen, but it is met immediately, a gain of about two. It'll be 38 from the 29-yard line. Slippery Rock needs to get to the 21 for a new set of downs. Needs to get to the 21, but they're very deep into, uh, into California territory right now, so they're in field goal range. Um, one would guess, but because they'll be kicking with the wind, it won't be against them. As we saw Cody Nuzo earlier on nail a 44 yarder. So Brock getting the play call from the sideline. Barksdale has it and he is in the shotgun formation with a sidecar to his right. He is back to pass over the middle and it is incomplete. That will bring out fourth and seven from the 29 yard line. We'll have to see if they go for it. Uh, looks like they might keep their offense out in the field. So they're gonna go for it on fourth down, Cody. It's a tough place to kick here with all the wind. Too close for a punt. Barksdale fakes the snap. Might try and draw California offsides as well. 15 seconds on the play clock. 8.14 left in the third quarter. Barksdale has the play. In shotgun still. Has the ball. Gonna throw it. It is complete. So Slippery Rock has the first down about the nine yard line. A great play right there from the Rock to get a new set of downs. And on that reception was number 15, John Shademan, the guy that we've been watching out for. You know, he's still leading the way with those tw 22 yards average per catch in the entire nation. And here he comes making this clutch catch on fourth down. Phenomenal play by the Rock and Shademan. That was a catch for 20 as it is a run. Tries to get in the end zone, Crenshaw. He is down at the one yard line, almost near the goal line, gain of eight. And that will be second and goal right at the goal line. S Gunshaw just, just short of making his way into the end zone and Slippery Rock, all drive has been wasting no time. Absolutely, Cody, they are very fast moving offense. Stood up at the goal line. California not allowing, I believe that is Crenshaw to get in. So it'll be third and goal now. See if they can do that again on third down and try and negate Slippery Rock from putting more points on the board. And leading the way on that stop was number 26 for the Vulcans, Branko Busick, who has been one of the most valuable assets on this defense. You know, the goal, lines, goal line defense really trying to prevent a touchdown here. It would be big for the offensive side. Branko Busick really a brick in the middle of that defense in the linebacking core. Third and goal now from the three yard line. Slippery Rock, Barksdale back to pass. Has a receiver, almost intercepted, and then it goes through the hands of the receiver. That looks like number 13 for the Rock. That is Julian Harrell. Yeah, in and out of the fingers after the tip. Uh, a lot of these passes have been really low thrown, able to be jumped up and tipped away. Tipping it away for the Vulcans was number 17, Chaz Veal, the defensive back. And um, if it weren't for that tip, it could have easily been another touchdown for the Rock. And they are going for the field goal, Cody, so 
We'll have to watch maybe the fake attempt as well. But this will make it a 14 point game. But California's defense, they bent, but they did not break on this one as long as they don't let the touchdown up here. And it is blocked. California blocks the field goal. So their defense takes a big stand, Cody. And it is still a 21 to 10 game. And they are pumped up on the sideline with 6.52 left in the third. The California fans right next to us are standing up on their feet. They are fired up right now after this huge block. I couldn't really tell who it was because, because of our vantage point. We had one of a really awkward vantage point, but still, Zach, that was a phenomenal stand. Phenomenal stand by the uh, defense. And we believe that was number nine, Anthony McPoyle um, on, the, uh, on the stop as we saw him come out and celebrate with his teammates and California setting up shop after the block field goal. First and 10 from, I believe, the 10-yard line. Cody Schroeder back under center. There's a fake handoff. Schroeder still has the ball. Going deep down the field, has the receiver, Nadir Brown, and it goes straight through his hands. Nadir Brown should have had that one, Cody. Cody Schroeder had a brilliant fake. Had the ball right behind his hands the entire time. Nadir Brown just not able to corral it. Yeah, it was a fantastic play action call by Cody Schroeder but unfortunately just barely thrown over the hands of Nadir Brown and the wind died down so Schroeder might have judged that throw a little bit, throwing it too hard, but still a great effort there by Schroeder and the rest of the offense. Now it's second and 10 from the 13 yard line is where they're officially spotting the ball from before so Schroeder with another pass. Mike Williams has it and he will step out of bounds. Looks like he might have enough for a new set of downs. Yeah, he's going to be stepping out at about the 22 or 23 yard line. So it'll be, um, it looks like they are moving the chain, Zach, as the clock did stop momentarily. And it is a new set of downs. So first and 10, six and a half left in the third quarter. Schroeder trying his best to lead a comeback for the Vulcans. Fiorius, the sidecar to his right. Johnson, Scott, and Williams, the receivers. Schroeder rolling out, trying to find a running room. He is going to break a defender and keep running down the field. He has an open hole, taken out of bounds around the 30-yard line, a gain of about seven on the play. Schroeder had a clear lane in front of him right on that near sideline, and he took advantage of it. You know, he's showing us, just like how the quarterback for Slippery Rock, Nigel Barksdale, did, that he can take, keep it for himself, too, and gain all those yards at the uh, evading that tackle there. That was the key tackle to evade. If it weren't for that, he would have been taken down in the backfield for a loss and he stepped out of bounds there. So regardless, it was a big gain for the Vulcans. Now second and one from the 32, they're calling it. Nine yard gain for Schroeder on the run. There's a handoff up the middle, Fiore. And he will get the first down, I believe. So a new set of downs for the Vulcans. Or actually, no, they're not gonna call it a new set of downs. They're gonna mark him just short. So still third and one, Fiore not going anywhere on that run. Fiore, you know, just trying to trying to get the short gains, but those short gains can be the hardest to get sometimes because the defense is really make sure that they collapse the defensive line very well. Absolutely, 5.20 left in the third quarter. Third and one at the 32 yard line. Hand up to Fiore, goes up the middle. And I don't know if he got it, Cody. It's hard to tell. Looks like he got right back to the line of scrimmage. We'll have to see if the Vulcans go for it here. Schroeder is running over to the sideline to get the play call. But Surrett is coming out for the punt. So fourth and one at the 32. They're going to punt the ball away. But Cody, watch for the fake here. I believe you're down by 11 points with under five left in the third quarter. You have to start getting something going. Watch for the fake. Yeah, the fake is always a possibility. We haven't seen one to my knowledge that I can recall this yet this year, but that doesn't mean the first one can happen. Surrett will punt the ball away, and it is a very high and far punt like we usually see from Surrett. Fair caught at the 35-yard line with 4.25 left in the third quarter. Now, Cody, we're going to look at the PSAC West standings yet again. Slippery Rock in California tied at the top, 4-1. and one. The big advantage, Slippery Rock is only 7-1. and one. California is 6-2. and two. Yeah, Slippery Rock has the upper hand in terms of uh, overall record. You know, Slippery, they're tied with California for divisional record, but that... That overall record is really what gives Slippery Rock, Slippery Rock excuse me, the upper hand. Um, and then Gannon, whenever you look at um, 
overall record. They're four and four right next down the line. So that's a, there's a big gap between those two. Absolutely. Sparksdale takes the handoff, goes down the field, pass complete, taken down to the 41 yard line, a gain of six. We'll make it second and four, 415 left. Yeah, the clock is still running with 415 left. Um, Slippery Rock leading the way, 21 to 10, still not wasting any time. There's a handoff now at the middle. And the runner is taken down about the 43 yard line, a gain of two. We'll make it third and very short two yards. California's defense has to stand up again if they want the ball back on this drive and stop Slippery Rock. Yeah, they're letting, uh, they're trying not to let anything happen here if Slippery Rock gains any more yards. It looks like the screen pass won't go anywhere and California stops them yet again short of first down. Dewey McDonald doing a great job right there as the senior defender. Yeah, Dewey McDonald really leading the way here. He was taking on a blocking assignment and bringing the tackle down at the same time. That's just a stellar play there by Dewey McDonald, doing two tasks at once, blocking and tackling. Not many players can do that, Zach. Absolutely, and you hate to see that he is a red shirt senior transferring for Fairmont State, his only season as a Vulcan. Hate to see that production leave next season when he graduates. Nonetheless, fourth and one for the Rock now. They will punt the ball away. Trey Johnson back to receive. That one will go into the end zone for a touchback. As it lands near our camera, three worker, Allison Steinheiser, she was talking before about getting hit with a football. Luckily she does not there, as we are going to look at the regional rankings now. Slippery Rock and California both in there, along with Bloomsburg and Westchester from the PSAC. And Bloomsburg has that one loss in comparison to Westchester being undefeated, even though they still have the same number of wins. That's gonna send Bloomsburg down. You know, the winning percentage is still uh, in Westchester's favor, even though they played more games. That one game is a loss, really hurts them. Yeah, Westchester and Bloomsburg actually play next week, but Franklin Kiate, his injury will really affect that game. First and 10 from the 20 yard line, exactly three minutes left. It's a handoff to Knox, he gets to the outside. Plows through a defender to the 25 yard line and a second down and five will approach. Second down in medium yards, as you said, Zach, with two minutes and 47 seconds left to go in the third quarter. California down by two scores here. It looked like Knox may have gone off a little bit gingerly, Zach, we'll hope that he's okay. Yeah, it looks like he is getting tended to on the sideline for his knee as Fiore is now in. It was actually gained at six on the play, second and four at the 26-yard line. Shredder is back to pass. Has a receiver. That one is batted away, deflected about uh, by Admire Carter. So the Silver Rock defense doing a good job trying to make sure Mike Williams doesn't hurt them again. Yeah, Mike Williams right on the near side. He's always a big threat on that side, and had he made that reception, he had that big lane in front of him, nothing but green, he would have only had one guy to beat, could have broken away for a big game. And that is Cody Schroeder's go-to play, hopefully he doesn't do that too much, Silver Rock will read it out and get a big turnover off it. Third and four at the 26, need to get to the 30 for a new set of downs, 224 left in the third quarter. Schroeder is back to pass, a face the defense, Throw is it, and it is incomplete. So that will be fourth down and four now for the Vulcans, and you have to expect that they will punt the ball away now. Yeah, but as you said, Zach, you gotta keep watching out for the fake. You know, it's always a possibility because being down by two scores with just over a quarter left to play, you're gonna have to bring some, uh, bring some offensive production as we saw that pass go in and out of the hands of Kawan Scott, uh, the intended receiver. Falls incomplete, unfortunately, for the Vulcans. Absolutely, Cody, and it's 2.17 left in the third quarter, fourth and four at the 26 yard line. Surrett, the wind punting right, or excuse me, blowing right at him as the punt is away and you can see it spiraling through the air. Taken by the Slippery Rock return about the 40 yard line, taken down right at midfield at the 49 yard line in Slippery Rock territory. And now, Cody, we're gonna look at the AFCA top 25 poll. Yeah, and right at there at the top and in, in all highlighted in uh, gold are the are the Super Region 1 teams, Bloomsburg at number 5, Shepard at number 9, Westchester at number 10, and those teams, Zach, are going to drop in those standings once they become updated because they, uh, unfortunately, Bloomsburg had a loss, so they will drop down, and Shepard and Westchester may be moving up a couple spots. Absolutely, Cody. Westchester 8-0 since the first time since 1974, like we said earlier. Nonetheless, first and 10 at the 49-yard line for the Rock. 
There's a fake handoff and a screen pass to Shadman as he breaks the defender and he has it down the sideline. He keeps running out around the 30 yard line. So California's defense not wanting to let that happen to them on this drive. They need to keep it close if they want to come back. Yeah, the play action fake had a good bit of the uh, good bit of the secondary fold. They all took blocking assignments from what I could see and didn't expect him to throw. Barksdale with the throw has the reception. That is Harrell on the completion. Looks like another new set of downs for the Rock as they are moving very fast on this drive to put up the points before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, even though they have the lead, they want to make the gap bigger. That's a fake handoff. Barksdale still has it. Trying to evade defenders, he has taken down about the six yard line. And make it a new set of downs again, I believe. Although I don't think it actually will. They're gonna mark him one yard short. So it will be second down and short now with one minute and 25 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Slippery Rock wasting no time. They wanna make the, the, the uh, gap bigger for California to catch up. Now it is a handoff. Crenshaw has it. And he will not get the first down. So it will be third and one now with a minute 05 left in the third quarter. Let's see if California's defense can take a big stand yet again. They've done it a couple times here in this half. Let's see if they can do it one more time. Yeah, third down and short now. The big test for California's defense. They've been tested all game long. This is one of the big tests that they've been studying for. Now it is a reception. And that is a touchdown for the Brock. That is number 17. And that is Dutriel. So it is now 27 to 10, the Rock try to make it a 18 point game after the extra point. Yeah, it is going to be a three possession game now for California. Big, this is a big, big, big score for Slippery Rock. Uh, trying In their effort to try and pull away from California here. You know, California has their work cut out. They're gonna have one quarter to score three times. And now the extra point is up and good. So when we come back, 45 seconds left in the third quarter. It's 28 to 10, Slippery Rock. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. We are back here on CUTV as Roberson and Brown are back to receive for the Balkans. Kickoff is away and Roberson will be the one to take it right around the five yard line and he will keep going. Goes back to the left side, has a hole there. Finds some running room out at the 30 and the 35 and there's a penalty flag on the field though, Cody. So we'll have to see what that is. Most likely going on the Balkans. Yeah, my guess is that it would be an illegal block in the back based on where it was thrown but we'll see pending the official call from the referee. And it's actually going to be holding against California. So the other most common penalty on kickoff returns. Uh, so that's gonna drive the Vulcans back maybe to about the 15 yard line. Actually, it's gonna be a 10 yard penalty, but it's from the spot of the foul. So they're gonna be spotted maybe the 12 or 13 yard line. So. Not the best field position for California if they want to come back in this one. And this has been a persistent problem that California has seen all day, with the exception of a few times in the first quarter whenever they got moderate field position. But they've been really pinned back in their own end so much. You know, they haven't spent that much time within Slippery Rock's end. Absolutely. 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Schroeder hands it off to Grissom, and he will work his way up the middle. A big run right there, out to about the 20 yard line, a gain of eight on the play. It'll be second down and short now for the Vulcans. It seems like with the clock stopping at 28, 28.8 seconds left, Zach, and the uh, 
Actually, it is going to be a first down. They will mark him as a first down as the clock resumes now. And it is first down. Hard to tell, like we've been saying many times, our vantage point. Grissom with another handoff. Gains a few yards in the play, maybe one or two. And that will probably be the last play of the third quarter as there's only 10 seconds left on the clock. So as we head into the fourth quarter, ladies and gentlemen, the Rock lead 28 to 10, but nothing is over yet as California will have something definitely to say about it. When we come back, we'll have the final exciting quarter of this matchup here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. CU TV is your home for local high school football action. Sundays at 8.30, Thursdays at 5.30, only on CU TV. You're watching CU TV, California University Television. And we are back here on CU TV as we are waving at camera three to show you exactly where we are at. We are actually outside of the stadium, I guess you could say, on the periphery of a fence here, guarding us from the track in the field. So nonetheless, the start of the fourth quarter, Cody, the Vulcans still have an opportunity to come back and tie this one up. It's going to take a lot for them to do it. And one thing that they do have in their favor right now, the wind is at their back. That's one thing that they've had the problem with in the third quarter. They'll be going against the wind. Now they have it at their back in their favor. Schroeder rolls to his left, tries to find a receiver, he does not, throws it down the field, and that one is incomplete. So that will bring up third and 11 from the 21 yard line. So they're actually gonna say Grissom lost a play on the run before the fourth quarter began. So that's his second loss play of the day, only coming in with one on the season. Now it's gonna be a big third and long for the Vulcans. They need to get this if they wanna have any shot of coming back, they have to score in this drive. Yeah, Jeffrey Knox Jr. is in the backfield right now with Schroeder, so he's uh, looking to break away, or Sch Schroeder may be looking for a big pass here. We'll see what happens. Third and 11. Schroeder, gonna pass. Has a deep ball. That one is caught by California receiver. That was Mike Williams, and he comes down with it. A big play for the Vulcans. We'll keep the drive going. Keeps the drive alive after that big gain on third and 11. Schroeder able to connect to his receiver way down deep on the field. That was Mike Williams on the near side. Been a big threat on the near side all game long and we saw it there. Cody Schroeder now working first and 10 from the 40 yard line, 14 and a half minutes left in the game. Right at the 40 yard line in Slippery Rock territory. Schroeder back to pass again, under pressure. He will step up and start running and gain about a yard. So it will be second and nine when play resumes after Schroeder evades some defenders and gains at least one yard out of the play. Yeah, Schroeder turning nothing into something. He saw that nobody was open downfield and the, the pocket was quickly collapsing around him. So he didn't really have that many options other than to keep it for himself and go straight forward. California getting the play call from the sideline. No update on James Harris as he looks like he's actually not on the sideline. So Schroeder is the guy to go to. Actually, Cody, thank you for pointing me out. He's right there. He was blocked by another California player, but your eyesight, good for the moment. And now Des Green not able to come down with the pass. He was right to him, and he just can't corral it. So maybe a freshman mistake right there. Green needed to come down with that one. Well, it may be that kind of mistake, but it's – well, I shouldn't say it's excusable. It's never excusable, but we've been seeing it a lot by both of these teams. Both of the quarterbacks have had more attempts than completions um, to their receivers. A lot of dropped passes, a lot of tipped passes, too. Third and nine. We'll see if we can get another long third down play from Schroeder here on this drive. Under some pressure. Has the reception. And down the middle of the field. Have to see who that is. That is Mike Williams again. So the senior leader 
is trying to make a name for himself on this drive. This is the last time he will play Slippery Rock. He wants to come out with a win. Mike Williams once again coming in with a big clutch third down conversion for the Vulcans. Um, he's the first time was on the near side, this time up the middle. No matter where he goes, he'll still get those clutch catches. First and 10 from the 23 yard line now. Schroeder back to pass. He will run it himself and gain a few yards right to about the 21 yard line. So it'll be second and about eight. 13 minutes left to go in the game, Zach. California down by three scores, 28 to 10. Wasting no time, going hurry up. Schroeder uh, making sure his offense is still on the right page, but they're not huddling up. Yeah, no huddle offense with so little time left. You have to go to it. Second and eight from the 21, 12.45 left in the game. Three receivers, twins to his left, and a sidecar to his left as well. I believe that is Jeff Knox. And there's a handoff to Knox, and he will gain his way to about the 20 yard line for a gain of one. We'll make it third and seven. So Schroeder faced with a few third down opportunities on this drive. We'll see if he can do it again. Entering the red zone in Slippery Rock territory, and this is a this is uncharted waters, I guess you could call it for California. They really haven't been in there all that much today. But the last time they were here, Schroeder kept it for himself and went for a 15 or 20 yard run for a touchdown. So Schroeder looking to do something like that again. Schroeder back, just over 12 minutes left in the game. Need to work quickly here if you want to come back from an 18 point deficit. Schroeder's back to pass. Under pressure, gets the pass off, and that one is incomplete. He was trying to go for Kawan Scott. We'll have to see if they go for it on fourth down. I believe you have to, Cody. You're down by 18. Uh, a field goal would cut into it, and then you would have to get a touchdown and a two-point conversion and another touchdown. But I think you have to go for it. But they're actually going to send Nuzo out there, so they're not going to listen to my coaching. They're going to go with Mike Kellers instead, which is probably the smart move. A 37-yard field goal attempt. Yeah, field goal will cut into the lead a little bit, but it's still a three-possession game unless you convert the uh, two-point conversion. So it could, in theory, be a two-score uh, a two-score game, but you got to do a lot to make it right. That and that kick is good, but there's going to be a false start against the Vulcans, so that kick will be negated. And we'll make it a fourth and 12, I believe. That was the first signal we received. But it is going to be false start against the offense. So that will back it up. That will make it a 42-yard attempt now. Let's we'll see if Cody Nuzo can do it again. He hit one from 44. The first drive of the game has to do it all over again. And his leg can sometimes be inconsistent. But good old Legatron, I'm sure he can put one through the uprights here. He has kicked it. Uh, in the same end before, when he nailed the 44-yarder, uh, it was coming down to this end. So he's looking to do it again from 42. The kick is up, and it is no good. So California does not come away with any points in that drive. I believe the wind has something to do with that one, as it is really blowing here, coming in our direction, and that's the way that the kick went. So I believe the wind did not help him on that one. It helped him the first time, not there. So the score remains 28 to 10. With 11.49 left in the fourth quarter. Slippery Rock will take over first and 10 at the 25 yard line. Yeah, and that false start penalty proved to be very costly on that previous play. One could, in theory, not call it a five yard penalty, but a three point penalty because it took away three points from California. And, you know, it, since Cody Nuzo wasn't able to get that kick, off, uh, kick through, you know, the three points didn't show up, so it still remains 28 to 10. And Barksdale trying to get the play call from the sideline. They have 10 seconds on the play clock. We'll have to see if they can get the playoff, and it looks like they will. Barksdale hands it off up the middle. The runner is met immediately. And that was number 30. That was Teddy Blakeman, I believe. Yeah, number 30, Teddy Blakeman um, coming through there, so on the, on the run. But that's the... Um, you know, Cal or excuse me, Slippery Rock just looking to uh, run out more of the clock here, more or less. They're still leading by three scores. Now Barksdale under pressure, and he will be sacked. The first sack of the day for the Vulcans. That is number 99, Anthony McPoyle. Uh, doing a good job is the freshman defensive tackle of getting pressure 
on the senior quarterback. Yeah, someone obviously missed their block on the offensive line. You just take a look. That was a great penetration there by McFoyle and the rest of the defensive line. A couple guys actually managed to sneak their way through. But McFoy, McFoy, McFoyle, excuse me, McFoyle was the, uh, was the leading tackler. Third and 18 now for the Rock. Passes away and is complete. And it will not be enough for a first down though. So we'll probably see the punt team for Slippery Rock come out and get this one away. Yeah, it is reading fourth down and two on the scoreboard. And so Slippery Rock, yeah, they are shifting to, to special teams and they will punt it away to California. With 10 minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the game, uh, California will get the ball back. And there's still time left for California. They have a heartbeat in this game, but I think if, they ha if they're gonna do it, they have to score immediately almost on this drive and then make sure you get the ball back right away from Slippery Rock. And I think, you know, you need uh, really three touchdowns almost to try and take the lead here as Johnson will let it bounce away from him and be marked down about the 30 yard line. But you kind of need three touchdowns to come back in this one. We're gonna look at the upcoming telecasts for CU TV on Tuesday night, we will have Vulcan Volleyball versus Seton Hill at the old Hamer Hall. Uh, next Saturday, we have Vulcan Football versus Mercyhurst. And then Saturday after the next, we have Vulcan Football at Millersville or the PSAC Championship. And barring results, CU TV will actually be covering the PSAC Championship game. So, but I'm sure we will still have some sort of coverage for you of the Millersville game. Maybe it might be radio, but nonetheless, the drive is about to start here, first and 10 from the 32 yard line, as the rain is about to start coming down in the sunlight, so something you don't see a lot. Schroeder, a deep pass, has a receiver, and he's well overthrown. That was Mike Williams who he was looking for. Yeah, Mike Williams just uh, falling short on his route again. The wind is going in that direction, so these passes now may be starting to get a little bit overthrown as they get carried away by the wind. You know, Schroeder's gonna have to adapt to that, but I'm sure he would much rather have the wind at his back than in his face. Absolutely, having the wind at the back might help his passes travel a little bit more downfield, so he might not have to put as much onto it and work, uh, hurt his arm any. That pass is incomplete, so that will bring up third and 10 now, and California seeing their chances of a PSAC West Championship possibly slipping away ever so slowly through their fingertips as the receivers just have not made the plays today to get the job done. Yeah, they've been um, been having trouble on both sides, both whether it be an interception or a complete pass, just getting tipped in and out of the fingers all game long. Third and 10, 10-13 10 left in the fourth quarter. As you see some of the raindrops collecting on the lens of our camera. And it's a late snap here as play clock is at one and the play is finally off and that one is almost complete and that one intended for i believe that was butler uh, tight end we have not called his name today as Sorette will come back out for another punt so california they have scored on their first drive in each of the two halves but nothing more and they're faced with an 18 point deficit with just over 10 minutes left yeah and this fourth this fourth down you know with 10 minutes left as you said zach it's the um a, it's an unfortunate fourth down for California, but there's still there's still too much time left to try and go for it, let alone in that field position. And Surratt gets a bad snap, still gets it away though. As Amira Carter is gonna let it go. It's going to go into the end zone. It takes a bad bounce for California. Looked like it was gonna go out the one yard line. We could see it right from here though, Cody. It bounces on the end of the football and goes into the end zone for a touchback. It is very, very close there by um, by by the uh, the football. As you take a look, you know it was really close to hitting the pylon. It may have seemed like as it was rolling out of bounds, but it just barely snuck into the corner of the end zone. And um, as a result, it's a touchback instead of Slippery Rock having their heels against the wall right at the goal line, literally. But Surrett doing a good job there, taking uh, doing what he could with the bad snap and getting the punt away. Now Slippery Rock will take over at the 20 yard line, 9.58 left in the game. There's a handoff up the middle to Crenshaw, and he will gain maybe five or six yards to about the 25 yard line. 
is going to be second down and five now, it, it looks, seems like. With Slippery Rock once again wasting no time, Zach. It's actually going to be second and three. They're going to say a gain of seven. So, Super Rock and a catch right there for Amos, but he is met immediately by number seven, Terrell Roberson. Knocks him down. Now we'll make it a third down play for the Rock. And I could hear that hit all the way over here through uh, through my microphone and my headset. It was a big hit, big clean hit. You know, helmet right into the shoulder pads of the receiver. And now the fourth down looks like it's gonna be coming up. <coughs> it's hard to tell if he got the conversion or not on third, but they are gonna say it's fourth down on the board. Looks like the Rock is gonna go for it. Actually, no, they just gave him a first down, Cody, so my apologies to the viewers at home. As now, first down play. There's another screen pass taken down for a gain of minimal yardage, maybe four tops. Yeah, with eight minutes and 55 seconds left to go, Slippery Rock still wasting no time. They're, like as you've been saying all game long, they're one of the quickest, quickest teams that we have ever seen play. And, um, you know, doing a really good job with the no huddle offense. It's actually second and five. Barksdale's gonna keep it himself up the middle, around midfield. He's gonna take him down for a gain of anywhere from 10 to 15 yards. As that's gonna be a new set of downs for the Rock. And the Vulcans are seeing their chances slip away here. I'm sure the seniors that saw the streak of PSAC West Championships end last year, wanted to get one this year before they graduated, but it looks like that's not gonna happen as they're down to the Rock, 28 to 10. Yeah, this is a big game for both senior classes of both of these teams. You know, big rivalry uh, being played for the last time at Slippery Rock. Now Crenshaw, a short gain up the middle. That was third and five, so it was about a four yard gain. We'll have to see if they give him a first down or not. You can say he's at the 49 yard line. Or actually, it's actually second and seven, but Cody, the scoreboard tells me it's third and six. So I'm not gonna listen to, I'm not gonna listen to the scoreboard. I'll listen to our director who I'm sure has some intelligence in his years. As now Crenshaw takes it up the middle. He is in the California territory. Slippery Rock looking to add on to the board. Uh, try and make it a bigger lead for themselves, try and pad the stats, and try and pad their resume as well, taking it down a Vulcan team that's still pretty good, although they had some unfortunate losses this year. Yeah, they're just going with the ground game now, trying to run out as much of the clock as they can. Yeah, we have 7.40 left in the game, so there's no such thing as a seven-minute offense, Cody, but Slippery Rock's going to try their hardest to make that happen. Usually you see a four- or two-minute offense based on time of, I don't know when you get the ball, but seven and a half left. We'll see what Silver Rock can do to run out the clock. As we have a pass that's incomplete around the five yard line. That will bring up third down. Nigel Barsdale trying to go for the near corner of the end zone, but it, regardless of the result, it will be negated as there is a holding penalty against Slippery Rock here. So the um, the Rock will be pushed back 10 yards. And it is holding against the offense, so I believe that's gonna be a repeat of second down. It's gonna be a repeat of second down. Exactly where the ball is spotted, I do not know. It's hard to tell from our vantage point like we showed you before in the broadcast. And it's spotted at the 46, so it's second and 19, they will call it from the 46 yard line. That's a fake handoff, Barksdale with a deep pass, and it is incomplete. The California defender is right there on the coverage, and that looked like, hard to tell, that was number 32, Tyrone Taylor. The great coverage there by the California cornerbacks on that play, you know, not letting, uh, if they would have caught that, Zach, it looked like it could have easily been another touchdown had he broken away. The only guy that he would have been had, had to beat was Jordan Bowman, had the only chance to bring him down. Now Barksdale on third and 19 has a pass. It is complete to Wendell. And it is complete. Looks like that's gonna be enough for a first down. They'll move the chains 
Slippery Rock will keep the ball. Dewey McDonald was credited with the tackle. Now all of a sudden, Slippery Rock showing uh, some offensive progress through the air. We saw them go through on the ground earlier on in this quarter to run out more of the clock. Barksdale with the screen pass to Shadman. He will go back over the middle, try and work it towards the end zone. Unsuccessful, but taken down around the 13 yard line. Still wasting no time. Six minutes and 54 seconds left to go in this game. We're in the fourth quarter of action. Slippery Rock leads the way over California 28 to 10. Still a three score game for the Vulcans. And something to know for next year in this rivalry, Barksdale will be graduating and a lot of seniors on the defense for California. As we have a touchdown for the Rock, that is number eight for the Rock. That is Robert Joyce, he is a tight end. The first time we've called his name all day as Barksdale gets another touchdown for the Rock. But like we were saying, a lot of seniors on both of these teams on defense and offense. It's gonna be a different picture next year when this game's back at Adamson Stadium. Yeah, and it's very fitting that today is Slippery Rock's senior night. You know, to end it on a on a classic PSAC rivalry here, and for that, fortunately for them and their fans, there looks like they're going to be sneaking away with a win here as the extra point Zach is interestingly made. Yeah, that one bounces off the post and goes in. Nonetheless, it's 35-10 here on CU TV. Need to know what's happening in your area? CU TV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. CU TV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television. And we welcome you back for more fourth quarter action here from Mahalik Thompson Stadium as the Rock look to kick the ball away after scoring and making it 35 to 10 on your Lisa Apply Company scoreboard as one Cody Jeanette is fighting with the trash bag try and watch the box so we can correctly telecast you the broadcast here is Brown returns it a pretty decent amount uh, this might be the time you see some younger players get in as you know you're probably gonna come away with a loss here Cody you might see some younger players and the good thing to note Schroeder and Harris the two quarterbacks for California are both sophomores so they have a lot more time to develop and make this team a playoff team maybe next year or the year after yeah they do you are correct on that one Zach and as we were talking about Seton Hill earlier on with younger teams you know that also applies to younger players uh, maybe freshmen sophomores uh, who are just starting their football careers in Schroeder and Harris's case uh, in this situation Schroeder with the pass it is complete works down the field and a big hit right there on the catch that was Kawan Scott who will be back next year he's a sophomore so get a little bit of a look from him, a tall receiver who can work it down the field. Yeah, and, and California uh, just right now trying to play a very clean, disciplined game, maybe even to cut into the lead even more, but Slippery Rock <laughs> ran away with it a little bit. Now pass completed to Mike Williams, the senior receiver. If he breaks a couple defenders and keeps going, looks like that'll be enough for a first down. With 5.58 left in this game, Slippery Rock looks like they will be claiming the figure of PSAC West Championship. They still have to go play Seton Hill. And Seton Hill, although they're a very young team, you never know, they might end their losing streak against a very fired up Super Rock team, knowing they might let a game down, and that will change the playoff picture completely. Nonetheless, a deep pass is intercepted by the Rock. That is number 21, and that is Derek Morgan. So that will probably end all chances for California to come back if they had any. And the Rock will come out of here with a victory. Yeah, with five minutes and 44 seconds left to go, Schroeder 
trying to make something happen, but unfortunately, intended for Mike Williams, overthrows his over his head. Uh, the wind might have gotten under that pass a little bit, and it falls right into the arms of Derek Morgan, the number 21, the defensive back for Slippery Rock. So Slippery Rock will regain control here. It's first and 10. And we might see some of the backups for Slippery Rock enter the game as, although it is senior day, you never want to have your starters get hurt as it looks like Barksdale is not out there. That is number 18, a new quarterback for the Rock. That is Zach Newsock. He is a redshirt freshman. We will probably be seeing him next year after Barksdale graduates. So a couple new players for Slippery Rock is number 26. That is Jimmy Zubik takes the handoff. And uh, Cody, something to note, Newsock was taking a lot of the reps in the pregame. We don't know if that was because Barksdale did have a, a brace on his knee. I uh, don't know if that was an injury or maybe just because senior day they had the seniors taking part in other activities before the game. Yeah, it could have been either way um, here with the, what you traditionally see during senior nights is the seniors get recognized during pregame or halftime ceremonies or both. And Slippery Rock in this case had a little bit of things going on for the seniors during their pregame ceremonies. As we see a few more dark clouds starting to head this way, hopefully we can get the game in before any real storms come through. That's a big hit now from Tyrone Taylor. We're gonna be calling his name a lot today as he's done a good job as the junior defensive back of stopping the rock receivers. Zach Newsock doing a good job making that complete pass, uh, making that screen pass complete. You know, showing that he can really lead this team, like make, trying to make a little bit of a name for himself here uh, later on in this game. As you said, a lot of new players come in during the late games to not risk the starters being hurt. Now it is third and 10 from the 36 yard line. And just trying to run some time off the clock is New Sock as he will keep it himself up the middle and be taken down for a short gain. And it'll make it a fourth down. And the punt team will come back out for Slippery Rock. They've had the punt a lot, but at times when they don't, their offense has been getting it going. They scored five times. They've not had any field goals. They had one field goal blocked by California at the beginning of the second half. California was starting to make a little bit of a comeback and their momentum was swinging their way, but it died down after that. And The Rock uh, pulled out ahead by t uh, two more touchdowns in this half, make it 35-10. And the times that Slippery Rock has punted, even though they were numerous, California failing to capitalize on it, whether it be a turnover on downs or a punt, you know, as they got the ball back, the offense wasn't able to produce that much. It looks like we might see a false start here against Slippery Rock, and we will. So that's going to make it fourth and 11 now from the 35-yard line. So we will not have a punt there. We will have the punt coming up momentarily. As we have 3.35 left in this one, and this will actually bring up an opportunity for Slippery Rock to run more time off the clock as I'm sure that is what they will be doing, taking their time, and actually they don't, so uh, gets the punt away, and it's not going to be fielded by Johnson, as it's going to be down about the 37 yard line, and we're gonna look at the schedule for California now. After this one, they will play Mercyhurst at home, still a tough matchup, Mercyhurst always plays the Balkans hard, and then we will go to Millersville, although CTV's coverage will be at the PSAC championship game. Yeah, and then the two games, you know, against Slippery Rock and Mercyhurst. Hopefully they don't turn out to be losses. As we take a look at Slippery Rock, um, Slippery Rock only had that one loss against Gannon, scoring 27 points. And then all of the games that they won, they've scored 40 or more, with the exception of Clarion, uh, defeating them 34 to 13. So they're bringing in 35 points against California here this afternoon. Big offensive powerhouse this Rock team is. Big offensive powerhouse. Now it's going to be a pass. Schroeder actually going to keep it himself and run down the field. He will gain maybe about six or seven yards off the play. They actually might be calling it a new first down as well. From what you're telling me, Cody, it's hard to tell. Actually, no, you're telling me there's a flag. Sorry, I can't read your sign language sometimes, but it's going to be a possible hold on California. You take a look on your screen here. The holding may happen it's right at the end of the play, right there. Mike Williams, guilty, uh, guilty party, and he, he saw you saw it as soon as uh, the flag went out. His head went back, like, oh man, I'm the guilty party on that one. 
and then uh, see, he knew what he did wrong and he felt ashamed for it. <laughs> that moment we're like, oh crud, they caught me. But anyways, back to action, under three minutes left now. First, and I believe 20, actually no, first and 13 from the 34 yard line. This was a spot foul as the pass gets away and is incomplete. Des Green not able to hold on to it. And Desmond Green has really had problems today holding on to the ball. And although he's a freshman, he has some time to develop. You hope not to see that in future years as he tries to become more of more integrated into this offense. Yeah, a lot of these players have time to develop. California, their average, the average age of this team or the average class rank, I guess you could say, is a lot lower than most of the teams in the PSAC. They're a pretty young team overall, just much like South Seton Hill is. That one is complete. That one is Trey Johnson. That's the first time we've really called his name through the air today. He had a couple short runs in the beginning, but the senior slot receiver, very diminutive, five foot six, getting the catch right there. Yeah, Trey Johnson leaping into the air to make this catch, not letting the wind affect that one, and still able to hold on to the ball very well after that was Austin Meal that came on the hit. And now looking for Neil, or excuse me, Trey Johnson again. And this time he overthrows him. He's a very small guy. You can't throw it that high. It's not Mike Williams or Kawan Scott, and he might not come down with it. Nonetheless, 227 remaining in the game. California trying to get on the board one more time here, and I guess what you could call garbage time. The Silver Rocks defense trying just not to let anything really crazy happen. I've never seen 25 points scored in two and a half minutes. But you never know, anything is possible. And Slippery Rocks fans celebrating a little early here. We just saw a balloon fly over the field. <laughs> and now Desmond Green, this time, trying to run after a pass. Gets his hand on it, not able to get the other one on it, though, or bring it into his chest. We make it third and ten. As we actually see, Butler is going to come in, and Desmond Green is being taken off. So we might see some Paul Butler uh, action here. The rest of the game, 223 left. Cody Schroeder still remains in the game. James Harris was on the sideline. He had his helmet off. So earlier in the game, he got uh, dr drilled on a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit right on his right on the earpiece of his helmet. We hope that he's okay. Now pass. That is completed to the Slippery Rock sideline. So that's going to be fourth and 10 now, 218 left. And we might see California go for it. They have nothing to lose now at this point get Cody Schroeder some more reps. You never know, he might be the starter for next week's game if James Harris has not cleared the play. He did not come back in this one, but I believe uh, concussion regulations, you are not allowed to come back into play. He will go through all the proper tests uh, and uh, all the training regimen that he needs to to be ready for next week. But we might see Schroeder next week as well against Mercy Hurst. Now Schroeder trying to roll out, gets the pass away, and that one is complete. And Trey Johnson will run into the end zone. So right there on fourth down, California gets another score, makes it 35 to 16. Uh, looking to make it 17 with 208 left. To try and make this a less, uh, I guess, what's, what's the word a I'm looking deficit. for? Less of a deficit, thank you, Cody. And this is a very fortunate, um, very fortunate call for Schroeder for not being called with an illegal forward pass. It looked like he was just about to step over the line of scrimmage whenever he made that pass to Trey Johnson. And fortunately for Schroeder, he didn't get called for that. So, um, and then California came away with a touchdown. I think the rule on that though is, Cody, as long as a part of you is behind the line when you throw, you're still good. As the extra point is up, and it is good. So it's now 35-17. Rock leads it with 2.08 left. When we come back, the conclusion of the game here in Slippery Rock. Need to know what's happening in your area? CU TV News Center brings you your best local news. Events on and around campus. Local weather. Vulcan sports coverage. TV News Center, live Thursdays at 5. You are watching CUTV, California University Television.
208 remaining in this one. Cody Nuzo ready for the kickoff. You might see an onside kick here. You never know. Try and get California even closer in this one in their aspirations to have a PSAC West Championship. As Silver Rock is actually playing for that. As it is going to be a very short squib kick. It is going to bounce into the end zone. And they are going to call it a touchback where he falls down on it. California would have taken him down for a safety in the end zone. Yeah, Admire, Admire Carter was the man uh, responsible for getting the touchback to Slippery Rock. So fortunately for him, there wasn't a safety because then it would have been a 35 to 19 game and California would have gotten the ball back uh, with two minutes and eight seconds, even though the score deficit is still really wide and the time may still be really short. Anything can happen. As, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, and as I always like to say, it isn't over until it's over. It's not over till it's over. A very old adage in sports is there's 208 left. Down by 18 though, it, it's gonna take a lot for the Vulcans to come back as new stock is back out there. None of the starters, I presume. Actually, Amos is out there for Slippery Rock, but none of the other starters are out there, I would presume. To try and protect them from injury as they go against Seton Hill next week. As Zubik gets it to the outside for maybe a four to six yard gain. It'll be second down and about four or five for the uh, for the Rock. You know, just right now, they're gonna be taking it on the ground to try and run out as much time as possible, but it's still baffling me, Zach, that, the, that this club isn't trying to run more of the clock out, like they're not huddling up. It still seems like they're trying to go no huddle to fool the defense off. Maybe that's just a tr maybe that's just a thing that they keep doing, like a standard routine or something more or less. Yeah, try and get the backups um, used to the system as well as we get a completely different look here as they switch all around. Try and get the backups uh, into the system. You never know when injuries might strike. As it looks like, we're gonna have a very third and short coming up momentarily with 112 left in the game. But you never know when injuries might strike and cause some backups to go into the game. You want them to be acclimated to the system that they're playing in. Both of these teams still have all three of their timeouts, but California not making uh, not making an effort to use one right now. There's less than a minute left to go in the game, and looks like the Slippery Rock will maintain control here on this third down. And Cody, you are right. Third and two as they switch all around again. 40 seconds left. Is it? Hand up to Zubik, no, Newsock will keep it himself. Looks like he will get the first down. And that will be the game, I believe, as they will have to run one more play if they can get it off in time. Actually, they're gonna have to run two more plays. Or, no, actually, because they started the clock. And the game clock and play clock are exactly timed up, but Newsock is going to take a knee in the victory formation. The Slipper Rock fans and the team themselves are starting to celebrate knowing they have just claimed at least a share of the PSAC West Championship, Cody. And next week they have a chance to clinch it all against Seton Hill at Offutt Field in Greensburg. Great game by both of these teams here. California's uh, offense unfortunately stumbling up short, but it could have been one heck of a game if they scored more points. Absolutely. Now for everyone in the CU TV crew, Cody Jeanette, I'm Zach Lamar. Thank you for joining us here at Mahalik Thompson Stadium. The Vulcans take a defeat 35 to 17.